And good afternoon. Welcome aboard the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Thursday. Here we be. What is the 23rd 23rd day of the month, our 52nd day together. And so with you in our 11th week, wrapping up tomorrow. And we are so glad to be with you on this Thursday. Beautiful day, a little cool, but it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Could be snowing, could be pouring down rain, could be doing a lot of things, but not too bad. And so good afternoon. Welcome aboard. We as we as we tell you every single time we dedicate the show to the man who hung on the cross. Without him, I, I'm I'm not anything. I hope you would think the same way. I am nothing without him. Here's today's verse, Psalm 73, 23, 24, 25, and 26, the verse of the day, and it goes like this. I am with you always. I will always be holding your hand. I will guide you with my counsel and take you into my glory. I am the strength of your heart and your portion forever. I am with you always. I will always be holding your hand. I will guide you with my counsel and take you into my glory. I am the strength of your heart and your portion forever. What more would you want? There's four big chunks of meat in that verse right there. The verse says. So anyway, that's our verse of the day. And we dedicate the show to, again, the man who hung on the cross. Headsets aren't where they need to be. Good afternoon, Horace. How are you? <laughs> Doing good. Yeah, good. Okay. So, <laughs> coming up, we got some concession stand items that you want to hear about. He's got those for us. So, things you can go to and get at different <laughs> ballparks around the country. We'll do that coming up here in a few minutes. We're going to hear from Brad Kozlowski coming up later on in the show and what he thinks about Bristol Motor Speedway. We will hear also from Kevin Harvick. Now, Kev was in with the Preds. Kev went up to the – We'll play that here in a couple of minutes. But Kev went up and hung with the Prez, the 2014 Spring Cup Series champion. So he got to hang out with the president. Oh, I feel for him. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'll get on the sidebar real quick. Our president has told us, I saw this today in the news, and, and this is not a political show, but you draw your own conclusions. Given everything that's going on in the world right now, our president said the most pressing item for this country is global warming. Now, he was down at Everglades yesterday walking amongst the gators and in the bushes and the shrubbery, and, and his, I saw a couple of pictures of him. So uh, apparently the most pressing item for this country, in his humble opinion, is global warming. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. And so uh, Kevin Harvick's going to be talking to us here in a little while because he was at the White House with his team to – be honored for winning the 2014 Sprint Cup Series championship. The lads of NASCAR will be moving into Richmond. Again, getting ready for racing this weekend. Joey Logano won the Cup race a year ago in the spring, and guess who won the Xfinity race? Kevin Harvick brought on the checkers. Now, first wins ever at Richmond International Raceway. Two drivers in the Cup Series. You think you can take any kind of guess that are current drivers, they got their first ever wins at Bristol as NASCAR Cup Series drivers. You should know one of these, but we'll go oh, ahead. Okay, and... smoke. Oh, <laughs> God, that was a softball. Let me just hand it over to just you. Just give it to me, big guy. Just throw it to you like a big pumpkin. Just deep and let you <laughs> knock it out of the park. Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, the first one's ever got race uh, wins at Richmond. So, anyway, the all-time winningest driver at Richmond, 13 wins under his belt. Who do you think that was? Or is uh, thirteen wins at former Richmond. Driver. Former driver, former former driver, mm-hmm. Waltrip. Uh, well, try again. I figured he was a short track king. He did that in Bristol. Yeah. Um, thirteen wins under his belt. Thirteen w- Earnhardt. Uh, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the king, Richard Petty. You got it. Thirteen wins. Current drivers, most wins for a current driver. Four. True or false? It's Kyle Busch. Okay. True or false? True. True. Yeah. Second are Smoke, your boy Smoke, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, and Dylan Hart Jr. all have three wins at Richmond. So they'll be there this weekend for a doubleheader, the Xfinity Series on Friday, and, of course, the Saturday night racing uh, in Richmond. And maybe, maybe getting wet, maybe get their feathers wet up there, calling for a lot of rain up and down the Atlantic seaboard. So, anyway, that's what's going on. We are ready to go. We've got baseball scores Going on this afternoon, this is the getaway day. That means, of course, to enlighten you on that, that would mean the getaway games are usually the final games of a series between two teams. Usually play a day game, get on the plane, and fly to the next city or for the setup for a weekend uh, weekend series. So there is a getaway games going on. We've got the Cubbies in Pittsburgh, Miami and Philadelphia, Atlanta and the Mets, Cincinnati and Milwaukee, and San Diego and Colorado 
in the National League. Getaway games in the American League, Yankees and Detroit, and everything else under the lights tonight. Daniel Norris scheduled to pitch tomorrow night for the tomorrow. for the Blue Jays, and they'll be in Florida against Tampa Bay. So yeah, that's who he struggled with the last time. So mm-hmm. throw him right back in the fire. That ain't working. Get rid of that thing. What was so, it? Yeah, a little thing, piece of licorice. Keeps getting stuck in my teeth. Can't talk. So. <laughs> Anyway, last night on the big league scoreboard, it went like this. Red Legs win again. Cincinnati's won three in a row. Or the hapless Milwaukee Brewers, they beat them two to one on a wild pitch. Got away from the catcher, and Billy Hamilton raced home with a go-ahead run in the top of the ninth inning. Pittsburgh beat the Cubbies. Miami over Philadelphia. Cardinals beat Washington. Mets over Atlanta. Colorado defeated San Diego. It was Arizona defeating Texas. And the Giants beat the Dodgers in the National League. In the American League last night, White Sox over Cleveland. Toronto defeats Baltimore, Yankees over Detroit, Tampa Bay defeats Boston, Minnesota over Kansas City. You had the Angels and Oakland. Oakland won that one, as did Seattle over Houston. So we'll keep you posted on baseball here this afternoon. NBA last night. Been watching any of these games at all? Not a one. Don't care? Don't care. Nah. Nah, maybe at the finals. That's entertainment. I mean, if you want to watch them, go out there and show off. Now, when they get to the finals – Sometimes these players, something clicks in them, mm-hmm. and they decide they really want to win, and so they play some basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But until then, nah. Well, my homework assignment last night was to try and find them on the Wi-Fi radio. I never got even got that hooked up, so I stayed in here. I, I, what did I tell everybody? You told everybody. What did I tell everybody? It wasn't because I couldn't. I just didn't. Oh, baloney. <laughs> no. I, well, I got home late from church, and I just didn't have time to do it. So it wasn't really that motivated. I came in here and sat in front of this screen. Now, they've got a little scoreboard thing going. I guess you've seen this where – they don't actually show you the game, but they got a little, like, a uh, horse shot, a, sh- a jump shot, and he got fouled by Tom, and horse shoots free throws, and they give you a running score. So I kind of hung on with that for a while with the Spurs and uh, who they play in the Clippers. They went into overtime. Spurs won that one, so they've evened the series at a game apiece. Atlanta over Brooklyn. Atlanta leads that series 2-0. Memphis beat Portland. Memphis leads that series 2-0. Tonight on the hardwood, Cleveland will be in Boston. And let's see, you have Cleveland, by the way, leads that one 2-0. Chicago and Milwaukee, and the Bulls lead that one 2-0. And Golden State in New Orleans against the Pelicans, and Golden State leads that series 2-0 in the best of seven. Now, this guy named Rondo, what's his first name? Oh, Randall Rondo? Not Randall Rondo. Oh, I was reading a story. (laughs) They've canned him. He's not coming back. He went from Boston to, to Dallas with the hopes of getting this team a little jump start for the playoffs. Well, he's been nothing but apparently a locker room cancer. And so they, Rick Carlisle, the coach, said he ain't coming back. He's gone. Rondo, anyway, he's from the, he was with the Celtics, and he got traded over to the Spurs, and I mean not the Spurs, but the Mavericks, and that didn't go well. And so uh, they are going to send him packing. So not a, not a good move. I was trying to find these scanning, scanning, scanning. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. But anyway, Rondo, Rajan, Ra- Rajan Rondo. Does that sound right? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. No, I don't know. The Dallas Maverick guy. He's a heck of a ball player. But apparently it didn't work out. He and Coach got into screaming matches more than once on the court. And you're not helping me, so I'll just no, keep digging keep, I'm, I'm still working on my, mm-hmm. uh, my assignment you gave me a minute ago. Mm-hmm. So. I noticed that. You, you're dialed into that screen over there. So... <laughs> Anyway, we'll run down. We'll find out later on. we got Greg Taylor going to join us in Wells Fargo, the Center Street. Uh, oh, gosh. What did you tell me the name of it was? Center Street Wealth, Man- Center Street Wealth Management Group. Thank you. And he'll join us with a quiz show coming up here in a little while. You also have David Carmichael with the John City Parks and Rec. Bob Figgins from the Kingsport Chamber is going to join us, talking about the Chamber Golf Scramble coming up at, at Ridgefields. And also David Crum will join us. Uh, he's due to join us from the – T-W-R-A, so Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. So quiz show coming up in a few minutes, and so we work our way through this Thursday. Now on the ice of the National Hockey League, you had from last night Ottawa skated past Montreal. Montreal leads that one, though, 3-1. Rangers over Pittsburgh in overtime. The Rangers lead that series over the Penguins, 3-1. St. Louis and Minnesota, 6-1 the Blues. That series tied at 2. Anaheim beats Winnipeg. Ooh, I watched part of that game. Anaheim wins that series, so Winnipeg's gone. Anaheim, Anaheim will wait for the winner of the next round. Now, tonight, Predators hosting the Blackhawks. Can they do it? Can they stave off elimination? Do or die tonight. Yep, they're down 3-1. They got to win tonight. 
in Nashville. And so they'll be there. And also tonight you have Calgary skating in Vancouver against them. <laughs> against them, Vancouver. Canucks. Canucks, thank you. Boy. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Hello. Sorry. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Wait a minute. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm awake now. Islanders. Where are you, Bill Hop? Yeah, really. Islanders of Washington <laughs> and Tampa Bay skates in Detroit tonight against the Red Wings. So that's what's happening on the ice in the National Hockey League. We've got your high school baseball and softball updates coming up here in a few minutes. All right, this story out of Knoxville. Out of the Knoxville, Knoxville New Sentinel Campus Police have obtained a felony theft warrant against former Vol defensive lineman Michael Sawyers, identified as a suspect in a theft of a $640 Xbox and three video games from a student in Reese Hall. Now, offensive lineman Coleman Thomas cleared last week a theft in the same case. Oh. So now we found the real thief. Oh, okay. So it ain't Coleman Thomas. It is now same scenario. They've pinned this one on Michael Sawyers. So 19 years old. So <laughs> Thomas is <laughs> Thomas is off the hook. Yeah. Uh, now, a UT they, police probe accused Coleman of stealing the stolen box, the controller in three games. An investigation by Thomas's attorney which included a polygraph examination, produced enough evidence to convince the Knox County District Attorney's Office to dismiss the theft charge. Authorities concluded Thomas had no idea the gaming items were stolen. Now, in comes Sawyers, I guess, uh, apparently. Uh, they found a scapegoat, that's what they did. Exactly. Documents filed with prosecutors revealed Thomas displayed no deception when explaining his part in pawning the stolen items. Thomas told authorities a former member of the football team had asked him to pawn the items. He also said a former Vol had a video gaming system the men had played on, so he assumed the one he pawned was owned by a former teammate. Thomas gave the cash from the sale of the items to the former Vol, which in this case will be Sawyer's. Now, he's in trouble, and Jones has, Butch Jones reinstated Thomas to the team. It's just, nah, this, this. They were in it together, but, you know, <laughs> you just don't walk into a store with, hot goods sell it yeah come back out and give the money back to the person that get no i'm no, sorry no, no no it was a tag team so yeah but they made it go away <laughs> for, for that's, thomas that's, that's the magic that's the whole thing bottom line is coleman's away. back on the team and salary's in trouble so there's there's the catch to the the whole deal so and anyway he's not on the team so he's not on the yeah. team he's Skate out goat. yeah so we're gonna put on this old cowboy and so my guy can get back on the field because we need him all right, games in American League stadiums, uh, top of the first. Yankees and Detroit scoreless. End of the second, Cubbies lead the Pirates 2-1. to one. Cubbies are 8-6. and six. Wyman can say all they want to about wait the next year, but playing some pretty good baseball yep. right now. Middle of the first inning, the Marlins, who are 4-11. and 11. Whoa. Whoa. And Philadelphia, 5-10. 5-10. And 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 There's a real wow. bottom of the cellar game there mm -hmm. for you. Top of the first, Atlanta and New York. Yankees, I mean the Yankees, the Mets are one of the hottest teams in baseball. And so they are 12-3 and three through the first 15 games, scoreless in the top of the first. And the Red Legs will take on Milwaukee starting in about 20 minutes. It'll be Homer Bailey on the mound after he got shelled. His ERA is 7.94. Kyle Lose, the gentleman he'll oppose, has an ERA of 10.34. <laughs> going to be a slugfest today, You're boys. supposed to be down to the Just twos. Just like they had the other day. <laughs> uh -huh. You're supposed to be down to the twos. Ones would be really good, but uh, tens and sevens, nah. That's like batting practice. So they're going to be 10 off. It'll appear in, in Milwaukee coming up here at 140. Then the Reds fly back into Cincinnati for the Cubbies this weekend and Milwaukee. So a, what, four, six-game homestand starting tomorrow night in Cincinnati. It's the Tom Taylor Sports Show. I want to say hello to Denise Lane, Adam Buckles, Mike Warner. These folks, uh, Facebook liked following. They're all about us on the Facebook. So facebook.com backslash the Tom Taylor Sports Show. <laughs> Oh, I, I love you talking this jargon, man, because no, it, it no just clue. does not flow. With, I have no clue. With, with, with I have the no clue. And I'm the first to tell you. Here we go. <laughs> Facebook.com backslash Tom Taylor Sports Show. Like and follow. Now, if I had a camera, i got to <laughs> talk about my man here for just a second. Uh, about 20 minutes before the show, we had a little ithu over here on the old pooter. <laughs> so my boy Horace is over here. And Fix he it. uses – and, and it just – no, I'm trying to learn this. So he uses this mouse pad, and he says now, and he's rather animated to say the least. Now imagine this is the mouse pad. This mouse pad is whatever he's trying to tell me. And this 
goes into this, but there's so much ram that this won't pick up this, and so this green thing slows this white thing down. I said, I don't give a flying flip. I'm just going to turn and walk down the hall. And when I come back, hopefully he's taking a big deep breath. He's relaxed. And he was wild as a buck. trying, And he was doing this, and he did this. And, and, I, and so I said, well, he's, and we're trying to th- highlight three things to put on a jump drive, and it took too long to do it. And I said, well, just take the three highlight things. Your pooter has problems. Well, uh, <laughs> says the man who maintains my pooter. So there you go. No. No, no. Oh, you who can't. was it that did not buy any security software for it for several months after, yeah, I, said, we, after I said go get some? But we do it now, so it's supposed well, to clear well. it all up. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to fix it. You're the miracle man. So he's up here going, oh, this needs to go in this, and when this don't go like this, this is not right. There's not enough RAM for this. It's too slow, and I'm thinking, here's what I want it to do. I want to hit that button, and I want it to go to Google so I can type in uh, ESPN or CBS Sports or whatever. That's all I want. I want to get my emails. I want to be able to get my uh, Facebook stuff. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. So what's the problem? I'm, there's not a problem. I just enjoyed <laughs> your, uh, as Horace says, or as Gator says, bring up Jameis Winston. That'll get him going. Oh, well, guess what? You're going to bring him there's up. There's a story today about our boy Jameis Winston, his boy Jameis. Jameis has a quarterback coach now. Quarterback coach. George Whitfield. He's, He's not even in the NFL yet. He's already. How can you afford him? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. You're a student athlete. So this George Whitfield guy has been a quarterback coach for Johnny Manziel, Cam Newton, uh, Andrew Luck, some of the other quarterbacks. So it's not just exclusive, but he has taken Jameis under his wing is the way he coined this. And so Jameis is now uh, with a quarterback coach. Now what, pray tell, does a quarterback coach do with a guy that's not even signed yet? I mean, I know he helps him work out. So he has an attorney, as a PR guy. And now he has a quarterback coach. <laughs> Somebody's paying him. Somebody's paying him. <laughs> or he's already signed a deal that when he gets drafted and he gets X number of millions of dollars in signing bonus uh-huh. that I get a piece of it. Uh-huh. I'm just telling you, something's up because my boy Jameis has now got a quarterback coach. He's worried. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know. So anyway, that's the latest, and I, I, I'm watching him over there. Gator, you're right. It just get, he just ramps it right up. You got to mention him. Let's see who else can I mention? Well, well you got your, you got your list over there, all right? Now put down whatever team drafts James Winston. Yeah. Winston's team. Okay, we'll wait and see. He gets the drafts a week from the day, so we'll see. Dylan Hart Jr., Denny Hamlin, James Winston, A. Rod, Gino uh, Ariamela. That's not how he said. The guy from the UConn, Gino. I just call him Gino. Florida State. <laughs> Tampa Bay, old rock and roll groups trying to make a comeback. Schools and snow days. We're through that now. Do you like frost? We got frost warning. Does that bother you? No bother. Frost doesn't bother me. <laughs> yes, yes, it does because it killed my peaches. There you go. Peach tree, you got to salt down. Is it gone? That's good. I'm, I'm, my wife, well, Mrs. V is is, is uh, trying to save the tree. She's got her Save the Tree campaign. She says, well, it provides shade out there for the dog. I'm sitting there going, the tree hasn't given me peaches in three years. It's coming down. I'll Bar- plant another one. There you go. <laughs> doesn't like Barry Bonds, doesn't like Josh Hamilton, doesn't like soccer, doesn't like Mike Tyson, doesn't like Jimbo Fisher, doesn't like Roger Goodell, uh, doesn't like Dave Hart, the UT athletic director, doesn't like Virginia Tech football. Although Dave Hart did make a good pick on the basketball side. Okay, so he's off. He's no longer in my bad, but he's still on my watch list. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave him on. I don't know if Hank, there's enough room on his little card. Just leave him on there. Save the savings. What's that? You can't skip this guy. Go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't touch running, anything. It you're, just over running, playing. you're running the machine. And he asks, and he tells me my computer's got problems. And I'm over here listening. All of a sudden, a commercial starts. <laughs> he doesn't like the New England I don't Patriots. I don't know where it came from. I'm not sure. I just. I just pray for 3 o'clock every day. Say, New England Patriots, <laughs> you don't like them, you don't like Mark Cuban, and you don't like Bo Ryan, the Wisconsin co- West Conchin co- what? Say, I can't even say it. Wisconsin coach. So there you go. Is there anybody else we need to add to that list? Everything good so far? So far. Well, we'll come up with somebody else, I'm sure. All right. Before we go to the break, before we hear from Kevin Harvey, give me one of the concession stand items that you'd like to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let, let us go down here and find a pick, and I'll pull it up. All righty. We'll just go. So this is this is local. You can go find it. This, this is not a hard drive to go get it. Okay. okay. First one is? First one is the deep <laughs> fried 
moon pie. Woo, yeah, deep fried <laughs> moon pie. Describe that for Over me. Over in Asheville. What's well, a moon pie? You deep fry it and sprinkle powdered sugar on it. They put a batter on it, deep it, fry it, and put some powdered sugar. Deep it, fry it? Okay. Deep it, fry it. Deep yeah. it, fry it. Deep so fry you deep it. fry moon pie. Over in Asheville. Put a little powdered Asheville sugar. Asheville tourists. Asheville tourists, yeah. So a deep fried moon pie. Would a, you have one of those? Oh, in a heartbeat. How much? <laughs> I did not say. It just oh. says this is what, you know, I just went to some, this site that had a bunch of All food right. you got to try. Deep fried moon pies in Asheville, the tourist ball bar. Give me one more. Want another one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, pull that one down. We're having fun today, kids. Yes. <laughs> now, this one, I would, I think it's is a unique. <laughs> it's unique. <laughs> I think this show's unique. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. And you will find this. Yes. Where I put it? You find it in Wisconsin. Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Uh huh. Have the big mother funnel burger. <laughs> the big mother funnel burger. Funnel. Funnel burger. You got big a, mother a one, funnel burger. One pound hamburger patty, mm-hmm. bacon, half pound of cheese, lettuce. Let me write this one down. Big mother <laughs> funnel burger. This is right beside his big honker pipes on his motorcycle. Okay. Big. I was big mother funnel big burger. Big mother funnel burger. <laughs> one pound of hamburger meat. Yeah. Bacon. Half pound of cheese, lettuce, sandwiched between two funnel cakes, sprinkled with powdered sugar. You're kidding me. No. A hamburger on a funnel. It's a, a funnel. funnel burger. A hamburger in, in between two funnel cakes. Yes. Powdered sugar and everything. Yes. And bacon. Bacon and cheese. And, and cheese and lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be all over that one. <laughs> Guarantee it. One pounder, too, big guy. Right. Bacon. Pounder. How much? Didn't say. Didn't say. Didn't right. say. But Bacon, you can cheese. bet it's not cheap. No. <laughs> and a pound of uh, pound of burger and bacon, cheese, and lettuce between two funnel funnel cakes. Yeah. The Big Mother Funnel Burger. You got it. Get this at the Wisconsin Timber, Timber Rattlers. Timber Rattlers Ballpark. Yeah. Baseball team, right? Yeah. Football. I mean, a baseball minor league team. All right. <laughs> I got one more if you just want me to go ahead. And oh, I can't stand. You just have to hold it. I can't stand it. Okay. After the deep fried moon pie and a Big Mother Funnel Burger, I'm not sure. I can't. My scent would be sensory overload. Can we just wait? <laughs> we can wait. In, in total anticipation of that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin Harvick and the boys went and saw the Prez. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, oh, let me get, uh, get it set up here. Again, Kevin Harvick visited the Prez. He and the team of the 2014 NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship team and at the White House. And so uh, the question was posed, Mr. Harvick. We asked him what was the coolest part of going to the White House and meeting the Prez. Well, to, to come up and, and be honored as the championship team was really special. I've been fortunate to be the White House before, and, and I think the, the best part for me was being able to see the team guys come up and um, be at the White House and tour the Capitol and tour the White House and do all the things that we got to do. So uh, just really proud to, uh, to be the champion and really proud of all my guys and, and seeing them experience some of this stuff for the first time. There you go. Kevin Harvick and his team <laughs> at the White House to visit the Perez. Now, would you go? Would I go? Yeah. If you're on a winning team and you're invited to the White House, would you go? If I was just a team member, I would think twice about it. Yeah. If I was the player, the, the main man, out of respect for the office, nah. I would go, but not for the man. Oh. Couldn't catch me there. Wouldn't be there. Nah. Not not right now anyway. So, And there's been others I wouldn't have gone to either. But, no, if I got the I call. I might not shake his hand, but I might show up. Uh, Go to the White House and hang. Nah. Probably wouldn't do it. Just, just, I'm just that way. Old stubborn cowboy <laughs> well, probably you see that, that, I still have respect for the office. Oh, I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, nah, probably wouldn't. So. Peter says he can feel his arteries clogging. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't had one yet. The big mother funnel burger. Bacon, <laughs> cheese, lettuce, and a pound of burger between two funnel cakes. Now, the funnel cake's got the the uh, oh, yeah, white just, powder on it. Oh, yeah, the sprinkle <laughs> powder sugar. Yeah. Good grief. That didn't even sound healthy. It can't be healthy. Well, I'm sure it's not. No, but. <laughs> but it tastes that, great. There's the point. There you go. That's the point. We'll take a quick break. Come right back. We're due to be joined by our buddy Bob Figgins from the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. He's going to visit with us here, and he's going to talk about the Chamber Golf Scramble coming up. We'll be right back again on this Thursday as you're watching, listening, and we appreciate that very, very much, the Tom Taylor Sports Show. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. 
Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that home insurance can keep your stuff covered even when it's not at home? Or that collisions with wildlife on the road may not be covered. And what if you didn't know you could be liable for any accidents on your property? The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, da, bum, 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 bum. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show, live streaming every day on your computer, your phone, livestream.com, the Tom Taylor Sports Show, nine states. Can you tell me we got somebody who's listening to us in Bristol, Great Britain? Is that right? Yeah, we had a hit from uh, uh, the UK. That's awesome. So we got to remember, we got nine states listening to us now. We appreciate that. And of course, across the Tri Cities, Kansas, California, South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Michigan, and Georgia. And of course, right here in the Tri Cities, folks like. Oh, let's see. May I say hello to Mike Warner? He likes us on Facebook. Also, Tommy Alderman likes us on Facebook. Frank Lepp, Hank Brown, and also our buddy Jeff Luthke. So we appreciate all those. And also, Coach Robert St. Clair likes us on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Let's go to the phone. Let me give you a quick update. He's there ready to go and talk to us. Let's see. Scoreboard update. Cubbies lead Pittsburgh 2-1 to in the third inning. At top of the second, it is scoreless Miami and Philadelphia. Atlanta, New York, scoreless in the bottom of the first. And the Reds will crank up here in about 12 minutes against Milwaukee in Milwaukee. Roberto, Bob Biggins with us from the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Tom Taylor. How are you? Just fine, sir. Your Braves are 8-6. and six. Now, they traded away most of the team in the offseason, but, hey, they're playing some pretty good baseball right now. Well, they're they're battling, you know, as best they can. But uh, I like what John Hart and, and company are doing. I, I think they're – Probably going to probably going to lose Hayward and Justin Upton anyway through free agency, and uh, got some good young players back. I think they moved from about the, near near the bottom of the league and in, in, with their minor league system to you know one of the top five or six organizations for minor league players. So um, yeah, the f- future looks very bright. We'll see about this year. <laughs> more, more optimistic about the future. Absolutely, that's the way to look at it. So, but they are eight and six right now, so they're hanging around. Of course, the hottest team really in Major League Baseball are the Mets. They're twelve and three. And so those two teams are scoreless in the bottom of the first inning. Got a big golf uh, golf tournament coming up, something you're very proud of, the Chamber Golf Scramble coming up soon. Tell me about it. Well, this is our 23rd uh, golf scramble for the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. This is, a, of course, a fundraiser for the Kingsport Chamber and two of our key programs, Keep Kingsport Beautiful and Leadership Kingsport. The tournament is Monday, May 11th at the beautiful uh, Ridgefields Country Club, a Donald Ross Design Course. And uh, the, the, the tournament has grown so much, Tom, and it, it's so popular and it's such a fun day that we actually have two flights. You can play in the morning round, which begins at 8.45 a.m., or the afternoon round at 2 p.m., or you can do like Stu Fisher and I do and just play in both and play all day. <laughs> so uh, there are many opportunities to play. Yeah, and so this is going to be held where now? It's at Ridgefields, Ridgefields Country Club on Monday, May 11th. Yeah, which will be coming up, uh, what, two weeks from uh, Monday? Two, two, wow. Two or three weeks away, that's right, yes. Big turnout all the time. Again, you always have some great food over there. Who's going to be cooking this year? Well, uh, Food City, our good friends at Food City and Texas Roadhouse uh, do the food. Food City has an omelet station for breakfast along with 
uh, pastries and donuts and, uh, and, and coffee and juices and fruit. Uh, always put out a great spread for breakfast, and then they, they do great. They do the snack bags uh, for every golfer, and they have a popcorn machine, so that that's there all day. And between Food City and Pepsi, they provide all the beverages and the the, the, the soft drinks. Of course, the Pepsi products, the water, and, the, and 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 different kinds of beer for the golfers. And then Texas Roadhouse is our lunch and dinner sponsor, so they provide a great menu for both lunch and dinner, and uh, very thankful to uh, both of those companies. So if you come out and have a bad round of golf, at least you'll be well fed. <laughs> there you go. Have a good time. Good fellowship, too. It's always a lot of fun to be around there, and, and uh, it's like the who's who of the region stops by and plays golf. How much does it cost, and how can we get signed up for this tournament? There are different opportunities, Tom. If you just want to enter as an individual and, 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 and be put on a team and meet some other people, the cost is $150. Uh, if you want to put a team of four in, just strictly a team of four, that's uh, four times 150 is obviously $600. There are whole sponsorships available for uh, $250 each. Or if you want to, a lot of teams do this. If you want to uh, sponsor a whole and put a complete team of four in, there's a discount with that, so the cost is $775. And then we have mulligans and red tees uh, available as well. You can prepay for those or, or pay the day of the event. Now, this is a fundraiser. Again, we're talking to Bob Biggins of the King Sport Chamber. This is a fundraiser for the Chamber, is it not? It is a fundraiser for the King Sport Chamber. Uh, it's a very important fundraiser for us. And uh, it benefits two of our key programs, Keep Keen Sport Beautiful, which is our, our environmental program, which uh, helps keep our city clean and beautiful and uh, for sustainability. And then our leadership program, which has a youth leadership program, the adult leadership program, and then the senior leadership program, Encore. So it benefits both of those programs. And so if you want to play, and it's not just limited to someone in Kingsport, you have folks geographically from all over the place, don't you? Absolutely, from the entire region that everybody plays. And, again, I want to just mention our title sponsors, again, Food City, Pepsi, and Hunter Smith and Davis. I mentioned Texas Roadhouse. And then we also have Lexus of Kingsport, um, which uh, is our hole-in-one sponsor. And so on all the, the, the four par threes, there's an opportunity to win some great prizes, the, the, the top one of which is a Lex, at least on a Lexus for a year. And if you get a hole in one, that's the, the the toughest par three. And then there are nice prizes for the other par threes. And then, of course, we have you know on two of the par fives we have most accurate drive. The other two par fives, um, longest drive, and none of which I ever win. And then the four <laughs> par threes we have um, closest to the pin. There are also prizes for that in addition to the hole in one prizes. All this again, by the way, Eric Campbell just went deep a three run shot for the Mets. It's three nothing New York in the bottom of the first inning. So. Uh, that you had one. to say that with you. You couldn't have waited until <laughs> until this interview was over. I, I noticed that. So th Sorry. Thanks, for that up, thanks for that update. <laughs> yeah, that's, I hear the hang up over there. Bob just said, I'm hanging up. I'll see you. So, <laughs> But anyway, it's 3 nothing. It's early. It's in the bottom of the first inning. We're talking to Bob Figgins. Now, it's not limited just for gentlemen. Ladies come play, too. Is that correct? A absolutely. And uh, women and, and, and seniors as well, you know, um, you know, the, uh, most golfers play from the white tees. We have the women play from the red tees. The seniors, uh, 15 over, play from the gold tees. So uh, it, it's a great day for everyone. And it's really, in addition to raising funds for the Kingsport Chamber and just having a great day of golf on a Monday at a beautiful course, it's it's a great opportunity to meet a lot of people and a great networking opportunity, a lot of key business decisions and business leaders that attend and play in this tournament. And uh, so you meet a lot of people, and if you just want to volunteer, you know, come out and watch our Lexus of Keen Sport hole-in-one hole, -in -one hole um, uh, for the car. Uh, we need hole watchers for that, so it's a good opportunity to volunteer as well. We're talking to Bob Fingans, the obvious question, why the King Sport Chamber of Commerce? Folks, uh, and again, your chamber membership's not limited to folks in King Sport. You've got it all over the region, so why should someone consider being a member of the King Sport Chamber? Well, in any chamber, Tom, in the region, whether it's Kingsport, Bristol, Johnson City, Greenville, Abingdon, Marion, you know, the chambers of commerce are all about uh, the economy, jobs, enterprise, about making a, a, having a strong and thriving and prosperous business community, business environment. It means you're going to have a greater community in which to live, a greater overall quality of life. So we do that through leadership programs. I mentioned our environmental programs. We have a small business program here at Cosby, which helps the small business entrepreneur get his or her small business launched and, and helps it even down the road, keep it thriving. 
Uh, we have a tourism program, which is bringing visitors to town, a move to Kingsport program, which is encouraging people to live here and work here, um, and, and several other programs that are, are very vital to what we do. Our government relations program, you know, monitors pieces of legislation that impact business. Our education programs working very closely with the schools and the business community. So we're all about building a better community and, and, and making this a great place to work and a great place to live. So I encourage any business, you know, whether, again, whatever city you're in, join your Chamber of Commerce and, and get involved and support it. We're done our buddy Bob Biggins again from the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. So we do want to play Who Do We Call? Uh, what's the deadline to enter? And tell me some of that, would you please? Absolutely. The deadline really, we need to enter probably uh, pr pr prior to uh, the week before May 11th. So sometime around May 6th uh, would, would be really good. Um, call your Kingsport Chamber at 392-8800, 392-8800, or go to kingsportchamber.org, kingsportchamber.org, and you can get more information. Is there anybody in particular we asked for once we call 392-8800 or just call and say we want to get under the golf? Well, I would say they could ask for me, but, you know, I don't want to dissuade people from playing. But um, <laughs> they, they can ask for me or Shanna, either one. They'd probably prefer to talk to Shanna, so either one of us can help you. <laughs> either, yeah, either way, that's yeah. exactly right. So, hey, how's the little guy doing? Is he doing good? Higgs is doing great. He's eight months now, uh, eight and a half months. I'm already saying he's too old, and um, – <laughs> uh, I wish he were two months old again, but he's feeling well and doing well in, in, in preschool where Laura teaches, and uh, they're both doing great. Awesome. So his first child, and again, uh, good good gentleman. Laura's a super lady, and Bob and I go back a long way. Good friendship there. So 392-8800, 23rd Annual Chamber Golf Scramble. What do you want to leave us with today, big guy? Just uh, go out and, and support your Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. If you have any questions, we invite you to any of our events. Uh, love to have you at the Golf Scramble, but you're welcome to come to any of our events after hours, fourth Fridays, and just learn more about what your Kingsport Chamber is all about. There you go. Hey, great report, my friend. I'm not going to give you the scoring more of the Braves. I'll just let you figure it out later on on your own. So I, I, I'll just, I'll just, I'm get a text message later. I'm sure with the final. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great report. Thank you as always. We'll talk to you again. We'll call you back and do it again before the uh, before the tournament. All right. Oh, absolutely. Appreciate it, Tom Taylor. Yes, sir. Good man right there. Appreciate his friendship. Our buddy Bob Figgins from the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce does a great job, and we appreciate him very much. I don't guess I should have told him his team went down 3 nothing, but <laughs> I just happened to see it pop up. And, and well, so, we knew it was going to happen. Yeah. We knew the Braves were going to start going south. Yeah, 3 nothing. top of the second now. The Mets are in top, uh, bottom of the second, scoreless Miami, Philadelphia. Reds and the uh, Milwaukee Brewers just getting started in about two minutes, and the Cubbies leave Pittsburgh 3-1. to one in the top of the fourth, and Detroit leads the Yankees 1-0. That game now in the top of the seconds. We'll keep you up to date on the big league scoreboard. You are listening to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We've got our thought for the day coming up here in just a second. Do want to remind you that we, uh, we're we going to be back here with you tomorrow on a Friday show. Already have booked up Heather Cook from Healthy King Sport. they got a brand-new initiative there to make it a healthier city, and we're going to hear from Heather Cook from Healthy Kingsport tomorrow. Later on the show today, David Carmichael from the Johnson City Parks and Rec. He's going to join us here at the top of the hour. Also, David Crum from the uh, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. What's going on in the woods and waterways? I'm going to ask him about all these fluctuating temperatures. What's going on with the livestock? Not the livestock, but the animals out there in the woods. Uh, do they react to these crazy temperatures we've been having? Warm now, cool nights are calling for a chance of frost maybe tonight in the mountains. So, Kind of, uh, but again, it's it's spring in Tennessee, so uh, this is kind of par for the course. We'll talk to him later on to the show. Then coming up next, we've got the quiz show. Our buddy Greg Taylor from Wells Fargo or Center Street Wealth Management Group getting ready to ask me the questions, and he's he was chuckling yesterday when he said, "You don't have a chance." I said, "Okay." <laughs> I said, you understand a horse? He said, yeah, I like to hear a horse giggle at you because he said, I'm you don't have a chance. Side. I'm on Greg's side, baby. Oh, yeah. He said, you don't have a chance. <laughs> I say quiz show wins go to nine today on the Bracken Paving Asphalt Maintenance Scoreboard. And so we're looking forward to that. And then tomorrow, Richard Isaacs will be doing it from Kingsport Cabinetry. So, yes. Okay. We're going to – let's see here. <laughs> We've been doing this. This is the 52nd day, right? Uh, Yep. Okay. 50. Well, let's just go 51. Uh-huh. All right. Now, I'm going to do I know, 52. 52 days. Right. Because I'm confident you're going to choke. Eight, eight into 52 is what you're doing. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, 52. Uh -huh. your eight divided by 52. You're enjoying this way too much over there. That's what's bothering me. That's 15% of the time <laughs> we win. <laughs> 
and not every win is yours, so yeah. you're probably around 10%. That was a one glare. Out of, one out of 10 times, you might win. Well, I, I'm five <laughs> I'm five for 51 then. But that's not totally true because I'm not I'm not playing all the time. Sometimes I'm asking that's questions. Right, right. Very little. So but still, that's, that's, that's It's 10%. not real good. Right. It's not real good. That's the whole point. <laughs> and you body slam me over here. It's not real good. I understand. And then, of course, the apester. Uh, they just they just look forward to Wednesday every day. You're over. Oh yeah, I'm an over. You're an against the yeah. Apester. <laughs> Wednesday, hump day, I'm an over against the Apester. There you go. <laughs> We're gonna take uh, what quick break. We'll come right back. We will be joined by our buddy Greg Taylor from again the Center Street, uh, Center Street Financial Group. Nope, Center Street. Uh, what did I just tell you? What was? Uh, wellness. <laughs> <laughs> Wells Fargo. What? No, Center Street. <laughs> Something management group started the W. You need to write it down. So I can't remember things. Center Street. We'll take a break. He's we'll find out. Correct you. He'll, he'll correct you. He'll tell you yeah, all about you it. Yeah, you got it. He'll correct me coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. And later on, we'll hear from Brad Kozlowski. We'll find out what he thinks about Bristol Motor Speedway. You'll be surprised at what he says about the last great Coliseum. Quick break. We'll be right back. You are listening to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know to update your coverage when adult children move home? Oh, heck no. Or that you could get coverage for identity theft through your homeowner's insurance. And that your valuables can be covered by home insurance, even when they're not at home. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. <laughs> Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store. Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Welcome back to the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Thursday. Again, the 23rd day of the month. Our 51st day together, actually 52nd day together. Coming up, we'll, we heard from Kevin Harvick earlier in the show. We'll hear from Brad Kozlowski, and you'll be interested to hear, I think, what he says about Bristol Motor Speedway. It's kind of, under, kind of interesting, and we'll find out from him. Also, David Carmichael, he joins us from the John City Parks and Rec coming up in a few minutes. We just finished talking to Bob Figgins of the Kingsport Chamber about the uh, golf scramble coming up. On May the, what do you say, May the 11th on that Monday. And also later on the show, David Crum tells us what's going on in the woods and waterways right now in the great state of Tennessee. To the phone we go, Center Street Wealth Management Group's Greg Taylor. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Hello, Thomas. I'm doing well. How are you today? Just fine, sir. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. A little cool, a little breezy, but a beautiful day. Could be snowing, could be raining, but beautiful day. And you're out bebobbing around. And tell me before we get into this, uh, the quiz show, tell me about Center Street Wealth Management Group, would you please? Yes, sir. Uh, we uh, moved over here last July 2nd. to uh, We're affiliated with Wells Fargo Advisors now, our team, which is Center Street Wealth Management Group. And uh, we are uh, over here at 125 West Center Street and just uh, here to help our clients and new clients that meet their financial goals. And uh, proud to be here in the beautiful downtown Kingsport, Tennessee. This is a sports show, of course, and with sports comes team, and you have a team concept. Tell me who's on the team. Yes, sir, we do. We have Jeff Bedford, Tim Colvin, Natalie Wells, and our associate, Mr. 
uh, Andrew Madukas, and uh, on the team we have a variety of different personalities and backgrounds, et cetera, to help people in uh, in all walks of life and uh, with different situations. On the team we have two who are uh, non-practicing certified public accountants. We have three certified financial planners, uh, and we just have a wealth of experience, uh, each person having um, over 10 years and some around 20 years' experience in the financial industry. We're talking again to our buddy Greg Taylor from, again, the Center Street Wealth Management Group, Wells Fargo, again, located on Center Street in downtown Kingsport, right there at the new parking garage, very easy to find. And you guys are doing, going and lady, going through some, uh, what, some construction, building some new digs, is that correct? Yes, sir, we are. When we moved in back last July, we were um, knew that we were, in that space temporarily and that we would remodel uh, once things settled down and we got uh, got our clients moved over and everything. So we started that process just a few weeks ago. So it's a little bit of inconvenience right now for us and our clients, but uh, just uh, really looking forward to having the new space, new conference rooms, uh, modern technology to, to provide the services to our clients and, and bring that platform that Wells Fargo Advisors um, has for us there to present things to our to our clients and the things that are available there, um, and we'll be in, a, in almost a, pretty much a brand new space, Tom. Absolutely, and so he's gonna, and we haven't had him on for a while, so we're glad to have him back, and he can do it here periodically. He's very busy with all that's going on, so make sure you like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Tom Taylor Sports Show. Like and follow, and Dustin Moore did, so we're gonna be playing today for Dustin Moore. He's about to ask me the questions. Horse, hit the quiz show theme, my friend. Here we go. I'm looking forward to it. Love it. (laughs) There you go. All right, five questions to challenge me so I can win for Dustin Moore. Give him free Earl change from American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City, home of the free loaner car program. Also a free haircut at Cherokee Barbershop. And also some free food from Braden's Barbecue. So here we go. Fire away, Captain Greg, so I can go five for five and move this from an eight to a nine <laughs> with the Bracken Paving Asphalt Maintenance Scoreboard. So here we go. All right, Mr. Tom. Yes, sir. This week is, is Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s birthday. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he would have been 63, either 63 or 64 next week. So since we just came off the Bristol race, I wanted to start off with a, a NASCAR question. So where and when did Dale Earnhardt Sr. win his first race? Oh, so these aren't true or false. i got to come up with the answer. Where did he win his first race? He won his first race on a way met. Well, I hear, I'll make it. Since I, that was kind of tough, I kind of – so let's just shorten that one down and say, where did Dale Earnhardt Sr. win his first race? That would be at Bristol Motor Speedway. Very good. There you go. Hit That's the button. Correct. There you go. All right, I'm one for one. Here we go, Dustin Moore. I'm going to win for you, buddy. Number two. All right, since you're wanting true or false here. And that was in 1979, by the way, in his rookie year that he won at Bristol, and he followed up that Bristol victory by winning the Rookie of the Year award. Now, true or false, to this day, Earnhardt is the first and only driver in NASCAR Winston Cup history to follow a Rookie of the Year title with a NASCAR Winston Cup championship in the next season. Wow. That's a great question. So, Earnhardt was rookie of the year then came back the next year and won a championship and the question is he's the only one's ever done a tour of false oh boy let me thank you yes rookie of the year driver and uh let's see here rookie of the year and came back won a championship i'm going to say that is true can you hear me yes i'd say that is true hello hello (laughs) (laughs) haven't touched anything over here Ding, ding, ding. Hello. Hello. All right. Hang on. You there? Oh, he hung up. Okay. Maybe he'll call. There we go. Oh, we got to call him yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously this is not Wyman. It's not just Wyman. It's cell phones. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Anytime a cell phone's going to happen? Uh, what? We, we got troubles. I don't know what it is. Cell phones always give us an issue. Yeah. Landlines are good. Cell phones are not yeah. good. All right. Green Acres is a place to be. <laughs> Farm living is a life for me. He's probably trying to call you. Oh. Oh. 
Or he may have felt, you know. Or he's just scared because I got that person right. That's what it is. <laughs> he just mysteriously <laughs> dropped all the phone. Hello, hello, and he's out. So he's scared of me because I went one for one. Hi, this is Greg Taylor. Nice. Please leave your name. All right, so. <laughs> Well, we'll try and get back to him. I'm not sure what happened, but we were sitting there just moving, just flying I mean, along. It just, it just died. Yeah, just blip, gone. So, is that what you think I got that right? Earnhardt's the only driver to win rookie of the year and can come I back with no a championship idea. the next year? The only one? Mm hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. I would say, gosh. You go think. back with the likes of, uh, you know, Buddy Baker and, and uh, Richard Petty and. Although I'm thinking, you think about that. I'm thinking coming this way, well, whether it's like well, you know, you go or back too. Smoke or, uh, man, that's a good question. I'm going to go true with it. And of course, it, it may not matter. I went one for one. Let's try one more time and see what we got. We can catch him. And again, we have to we have to fix this. This is no fun. We got to – oh, there. Now he's sending me something over here. So, okay. I don't think it's cell phones. Thank you, Apester. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to you and yours. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, what's she thinking? She says, I think it's. <laughs> well, it may be his phone because, you know, he's, it's not answering now. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Greg Taylor. Yeah, I think you, yeah. I think there's problems on his end. So, yeah. anyway, yep. uh, we'll move on. Maybe we can catch him tomorrow. Maybe we can catch him later on in the show. Maybe we just catch him. So, anyway, it's Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us. It'll be a good time to go to the thought for the day with my buddy larry kaiser from larry kaiser nationwide insurance the big easy had lunch with him today what a great guy loves the show goes home and sometimes the evenings and listens to him the podcast sits down in the big chair and listens and says you boys are funny i said okay <laughs> he especially enjoyed your tirade about the raptors the other day Did, <laughs> tirade was the word he used i said yeah. tirade. i said he gets all worked up he said yes he does he, he's an excitable <laughs> chap i said you have no clue what i deal with in here sometimes <laughs> All I got to do is ask him today the question on the computer. Oh, you're wrong. Well, <laughs> I'm just asking for <laughs> clarification on the computer. And you said, let me go through this again. This is the computer. <laughs> this is the RAM jet that you have. RAM okay. jet? Where Something, I don't know. For 44 <laughs> gigabytes of RAM, Hooli Hoo jet. I said, gotcha. Now, if uh, this goes into folks, this. You see what I have to deal with, too? <laughs> he said, if this will not go into that, there's too much RAM, not enough memory, you, your PC's got problems. Okay. I'm, <laughs> well, it does. Here we go. And yeah, let's go to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Hello. Greetings, Thomas. Hello. Would you like to have that with pepperoni or cheese? Can I help you? I would like uh, uh, <laughs> double cheese, triple pepperoni. I'm right there. Bing, we got it. All right. So <laughs> back to the quiz show. I'm one for one. So the question is, Earnhardt, the only guy to win rookie of the year and come back and win a championship. Is, is, you asked me, is he the only one, true or false? Is that correct? True or false, did he win the championship in the year following Rookie of the Year, and is he the only one to ever have done so? I will say that is true. That is correct, Thomas. Oh, Dustin Moore, I'm on you, Bubba. All right, number three. <laughs> number three, the ETSU Buck football team has been dormant since the end of the 2003 season, but in the process of being reinstated with the first season coming up in 2015. True or false? That is. Was the, fir <laughs> was the first error season for the Buccaneer football in 1895, true or false? That is false. Ho! Correct. Thank you. <laughs> I'm three first for three. Season. I'm smoking. First season was 1920, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. You're exactly right. Became a school in 1911. All right, here we go. We're three for three. Number four. All right, Mr. Cincinnati Reds fan. Oh, no. What year was Pete Rose's rookie season? Was it 1965? True or false? Oh, boy. <laughs> Rose's rookie season, 1965. It was in the 60s. Is either true. I'm going to go true. I'm sorry, Thomas. That would be 1963. God, that was the only, that was the only one I was going to do. <laughs> you know, he's over here pounding oh, on Oh, I hate bed. losing. God, I hate losing. All right. <laughs> Because I had, it's in my brain, I had 63 or 65, and I missed it. Dad gummit. All right. Stupid question. All right. Number five. Here we go. Okay. I'll, I'll go to a, a, maybe a more uh, area you know more about the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> oh, if he misses oh, this, I'm going to love it. I'm gonna oh, love Lord. It. All right. Here we go. All right. 
here you go. This, I'm just throwing this one up here. This is a lobbing one out there in front of you, Tom. All right. True or false? In the history oh, no. of the Raiders franchise, right? Lane Kiffin is the only coach to go undefeated in his first season. True or false? Lane Kiffin, the only coach to go undefeated in his first season. We didn't go undefeated. got fired. So, that would be false. False is correct. Hey! <laughs> so, now I'm going to burn my Pete Rose card because I thought I had that 63 or 60. I knew it was either 63 or 65. Damn, Don't burn Kevin. it. Don't burn it. Just stick it in the mail to me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's going to be worth something Maybe again. worth some money. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my. Dad, give him another four for five this week. That's twice. Can you hear me? Yes, that's twice I've gone four for five. So, are you with me or we lose you again? No, we've lost him I again. I lost All him right. again. All right. Hello? All right, roll the theme music. Bless his heart. We'll try it again tomorrow. I'm done with him anyway. God. <laughs> Burns me up. Stupid questions. When do I get that? I'm getting tired of getting put in the burner. When do I get to ask him questions and apester questions? And how come I always have to be the one taking the heat? When do I get to ask questions? When when do I get to giggle at, at somebody else's expense? Well, you always, Dad, usually go. on Fridays when you ask me. Oh, man. <laughs> God, I got down to one. Now, Four wait, wait, five. wait. Is tomorrow buzzer day? I don't know whose day it is. Uh, no, it's supposed to be Richard Isaacs tomorrow. Okay. Buzzer's on vacation, so. All right. Uh, so, we'll do it tomorrow. Gosh, it's 19. See, I'm in my brain thinking it's either 63 or 65. Try to remember the stupid rookie card. You don't care. You're over there giggling because I missed it. So <laughs> It uh, stays at eight. Oh, uh, God. God. That percentage is, is shrinking again, more time. just a little Man, more. Man, I hate losing. God. <laughs> Win, lose, or tie, my Raider do I die. I hate losing. All right, so. Gator wants to know if we're doing this for dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm tired of losing. Man, oh, man, I had it four for five. It's twice this week. I go four for five. All right, let's go to the stupid commercial break. We'll be right back. Everything's stupid today, so now we're going to go back. I'm mad at the phone system. I'm mad at. What about thought for the day? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Today's thought for the day. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's change. Today's thought for the day. Let's be pleasant and happy, Tom. Thank you. Today's thought for the day from Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance. The difference between being a big shot and a little shot is that the big shot's <laughs> just a little shot that kept on shooting. <laughs> oh, how apropos. Oh, there you yeah, go. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> The difference between a big shot and a little shot is that the big shot's just a little shot that kept on shooting. There you go. Four for five. Just keep trying, Tom. Just 1963. Keep trying. God, 19, I was so close. A stupid. Oh, God. Can't stand to lose. All right. The difference between a big shot and a little shot is that a big shot's just a little shot that kept on shooting. That is the thought for the day today because we're a kinder, nicer sports show. <laughs> And it's brought to you by Larry Kaiser. God, I hate to lose. Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance, 282-1389. And that will be home of the Big Easy. And before we go to the break, get ready for David Carmichael. Let me tell you about Larry Kaiser. Life insurance, what it can do for you. It can help you with making mortgage or rent payments. It can provide an income to your family. It can help with life insurance, can help with final expenses. It can transfer an inheritance to your loved ones. It can help with paying estate or inheritance taxes and cost. And it also can help with business continuation. If that's Gator, please tell him, do not. <laughs> Is that Gator? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. When you're ready, wait a minute, we're ready when you are. You deserve faster, more convenient, easier ways to meet your insurance and financial needs. That's why Nationwide has agencies across the street and across the country. And our buddy Larry Kaiser, Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance on Springbrook Drive in North Johnson City, 282-1389. He's a heck of a guy, nice guy. And, again, Nationwide is on your side, prepared for life, life insurance programs at Nationwide Insurance. Because why? Because we have permanent, whole life, and universal life insurance and term life because we're a kinder, gentler <laughs> sports show because we like to lose. We like to go four for five, 14 days in a row. Mercy, mercy, mercy. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We've got my man Carmichael, who's supposed to have some uh, trinkets from me from the Predators game last week. He's due to join us next (laughs) (laughs) on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Life has its twists and turns. It can take many different shapes. But a good retirement plan changes with your life. And as we talk about what you're putting away and how much you'll need to retire, What was uncertain becomes clear. 
At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that home insurance can keep your stuff covered even when it's not at home? Or that collisions with wildlife on the road may not be covered. And what if you didn't know you could be liable for any accidents on your property? The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. Okay, you need to kill that and play the theme show music. Stop of the hour. You know that. Oh, that's, that's right. I, I, yeah, right. Go ahead and hit it. Let's do you it. You want to hit this theme through? Music? Absolutely. Let's do All it. All right. Here we go. This is a. This is a show that is fluid would be the way to describe this show. Here we go. That's got a little ump to it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to our number two of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thank you for being with us. Again, the thought for the day. The difference between a big shot and a little shot is that a big shot is just a little shot. They kept on shooting. That would be our thought for the day. From Larry Kaiser, Nationwide Insurance, David Carmichael joins us. Carmichael, I'll go four for five on the quiz show. And the question was, you may know this, Pete Rose's rookie year. What year was it? 1963 was rookie of the year. <laughs> <laughs> He's been listening. <laughs> he played, he, and actually that year he played second base. Okay, okay. So I'll go four for five. That's the only one I missed. I said 60, I thought in my brain it was 65. In fact, the question was, was he rookie of the year in 65? And I said true. And, of course, he wasn't. It was, I knew it was either 63 or 65, so I missed it. If I could have called you, you could have helped me go on five for five. But And, you know, in 65, and I may be mistaken, <laughs> but I was thinking maybe Tony Perez might have been rookie of the year in 65. Yeah, that's my all-time favorite player. He was. As a matter of fact, I forgot about that. And there's his autograph picture up on the wall. But anyway, now what do you think about the Red Legs? Let's talk a little sports here for a minute before we get to matters at hand. Carmichael with us from the John City Parks and Rec. He joins us each week with a lot of good information. So what about the Reds right now? Well, they won three Joey in a row. Votto and Joey Votto and – Joey Votto, that's, that's about what this team is. Well, and maybe a little bit of, you know, a little at times a little bit of Todd Frazier, but it seems like to be Joey Votto, Joey Votto, Joey Votto. And what about I mean, Billy Hamilton is, I mean, you can't get on 28% of the time. I mean, you've got to, you've got to get on base more than that to be effective. Exactly. And Zach Coast had a little bit of offense. Now, what was your take on the Brian Price going his little tirade earlier in the week? Oh, I did one of those earlier today at work, so I know I felt like what Brian Price when he and you know it was, it was just stupidity on the Reds' part to have Masarocco not on a you know why didn't they just get him out of town and get him away from having he and the and the guys they were going to call up? I mean it's just frustration, but they're still but they you know they get well it's it's go to Milwaukee and get well everybody's going to Milwaukee and get well. Oh, absolutely. Now tell me what happened. I don't know the whole story. What triggered Brian Price with that seventy seven f bomb tirade? Yeah, he one of the Cincinnati beat reporters, and I cannot rem- I follow the guy on Twitter, but I can't remember his name right now. He mentioned he was flying to the game. And mentioned he saw Mazzarocco and the guy that they were going to call up from Mazzarocco to or a, a backup catcher from the minor leagues on the same plane together. And he was telling, you know, like Mazzarocco's not going to play. They're bringing somebody, you know, in with him to, to play. And Price just went. It was like it was more of the reporters should have been more on the club side 
than reporting the news. Gotcha. And, and so from all reports is he's a really good guy. He's very thoughtful when he does his answers. You know, a Bruce Bochy type doesn't, you know, really lose his temper, but just something set him off. And they're, you know, they're hoping it's just a one time, you know, one time deal rather than this is the beginning of getting stressed. But this was also over the weekend before they hit Milwaukee, too. So if you're the Reds management, do you do something to him? Just let him get by with it. You probably say something. You probably put a public relations guy next to him and say, well, you know, Brian, you don't have to drop the F-bomb 77 times, you know, just do a little bit better job at controlling your cool when you're around reporters because now, I mean, it's, you know, it's not necessarily in the papers. It hits Twitter. And when it hits Twitter, I mean, it's all over the world. Homer Bailey just gave up a home run to Lind in the bottom of the first inning. Milwaukee leads the Reds one nothing, and Milwaukee trying to avoid a sweep by the Red Legs who head back home for the Cubbies. And Milwaukee, so I'm under the I'm under the uh, feeling that he ought to be suspend, I don't know, suspended financially. They need to make an example. I don't think the Reds want folks to think this is how their organization is going to be portrayed by what he did. So no, and I, and you know you may you may set him you know set him set him down for game without pay. I just I don't know. I just think it was like I said since it's happened they've played better. So maybe that's even though it's not necessarily the most classy move to do. They've played better since that happened. It was probably just, you know, frustration had built up with the team. Of course, this this is a guy I'm talking to that apparently did the same thing this morning. You had a little little blow oh, up. Oh, I just him. felt the, I felt the same frustration that Brian <laughs> <laughs> that he did. I just took it out on my my wall my four walls here in the office. So we're talking to Carmichael with the Parks and Rags. Now you went to Nashville last week and saw the yep. Predators. Tell me about that experience. How was that for you? It was a wonderful game. I mean, it, other than the loss. I mean, the over, double overtime, it goes to like 12.30 Eastern time, which I had to be out of Nashville about four or five hours later, so that didn't really was the best of situations. But the game was great. The Predators had the chance to blow it open early when they were up 3 nothing, and then just took too many penalties. That was the, that was their downfall. The, their, the downfall all year for Nashville has been the second period of games, that we get out to a lead and then struggle, especially the last 25 games or so. And the second period's almost been like it's just been their has been their bugaboo the last quarter of the season, and they played they they've played well in this series considering that the captain Shea Weber has been down, uh, Mr. Kerry Underwood or Mike Fisher has been out since that first game the first period of the first game. I mean he gets a lower body injury, and he's not been back in the series and he's their starting center so. They're they're still fighting along. I mean, they're two goals away from being ahead three to one instead of being down three to one. We're talking to David Carmichael again. He's with us from the John City Parks and Rec. Lots going on to the Parks and Rec this time of year, of course, all year long. So tonight, Predators stave off elimination. Can they do it? Yes, they can. I think they can and get it back to Chicago. And this is what happened in in the 2010. It was the same thing. It went to a six game series, and before they lost to the Blackhawks. And that year, the Blackhawks went on and won the Stanley Cup. So the the Blackhawks are playing well. They brought in the backup goaltender, Corey Crawford, who had been their goaltender in 2012-13 when they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, got pulled in the first after giving up three just horrible goals in the first period, and they brought their backup in, who had been in the Nashville organization before. He had played at Milwaukee, and uh, has been the backup this year in Chicago, and has played pretty well in this series. We're talking to David Carmichael. Scoreboard update. It's New York now three, Atlanta one in the bottom of the third. Top of the third, Milwaukee leads Cincinnati one nothing. Also on the scoreboard right now, you've got Miami and Philadelphia scoreless in the fourth, and you have the Cubbies over Pittsburgh four to one. That's in the bottom of the fifth, and Detroit still leads New York one nothing in the top of the fourth. You got the Reds trailing one nothing as they bat to the Brewers. Actually, the Reds are batting the top of the third, trailing one to nothing. Carmichael, tell me what's going on. You got some. Uh, Got some opportunities for folks to volunteer and be a part of the John City Parks and Rec. Tell me what's going on. Yes, on Saturday we've got our annual day of service, and this year it will be down at Kiwanis Park on 717 West Market Street. Kiwanis has been for many years probably our park, most uh, visible park in our system because it's right there on Market Street, one of the most heavily used and heavily uh, traveled areas of Johnson City right down near as you're going toward ETSU or the VA Center or even the cottage for a hamburger. Uh, 
It's right there, and we're doing some work down there. This We're putting a new playground in. We purchased a playground when we were at the National Recreation Conference in Charlotte last October. We're putting that playground in starting on Saturday. We're also going to paint part of the, the bottom half of the Kiwanis building. We're going to do some paintings down at the Veterans Memorial, and we're going to rework the sand volleyball courts that we have down there and put some sealer down there. So we're looking. We've got volunteers that will be there, volunteers from area churches, the Kiwanis Club, uh, part of our staff will be down. Most of our staff will be down there, and anybody else who's interested, or anybody who's in the, especially if you live toward the community of Kiwanis Park, and Kiwanis is probably known as the the foundation for the athletic career of Steve Spurrier, because Steve's dad uh, was a minister to church right across the street from Kiwanis, and Steve and his brother Graham lived right there next to the next to the church and next to the park. And if you've ever seen the special that Kenny Chesney produced this year, this past football season, about Steve Spurrier. They, Graham, they went down there and did some footage and some things at Kiwanis Park. It was pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. And all this going on coming up on Saturday. Now, what time do we need to be there to help out? Start at 8 o'clock. And it goes and until? We'll go hopefully till, And hopefully the rain will stay, stay away long enough for us to get some work prop done, probably till 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Now, also a program we got with the John City Parks and Rec. We're talking to David Carmichael, our buddy. Oh, by the way, did you get us anything from the from the Predators game? I got you a pennant, and I brought back a sign, Let's Go Preds. And also, and I cannot, <laughs> because my mind has escaped me, but the former lead singer from Kansas, before I was telling you about performing during the intermissions, mm-hmm. and the former lead singer from Kansas performed. And, I mean, he do some of the Kansas songs. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Carry On, Wayward Son, and Dust in the Wind, and wow. all the Kansas hits. He was he was with Kansas. He was an original member of Kansas and was the original lead singer from Kansas and was with a group to like 85 or 86. He uh, was with Tesla, and he also had a recording studio in Nashville for many years. So did the crowd react favorably to his yes. singing? Yes, oh yes. They he was it? very good. Sound, voice sounded great. All right. So this this was the halftime, or they call it halftime in hockey, right? Oh, no, uh, between period. Between periods. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess I need to bone up a little bit on my hockey. So, Oh, by the way, where can I, can I listen on the radio? Do they have a radio station or a streaming audio I can listen to the Predators tonight? You may be able to get them. Their, their uh, affiliate is 102.5 in Nashville. Hmm, all right. And uh, they, God, I know the TV guys, uh, Pete Weber has done the TV down there since the team, and Stu Grissom, who used to play in the National Hockey League, is, is the, the TV people. But on the radio, they are on. I've tried, you know, I've even tried, I've emailed them for years to try to get them to put an affiliate in East Tennessee because there are hockey fans here. And you can either listen to them on 102.5, or if you have Sirius Satellite Radio, you can find the Predators on there. There you go. All right, so we got a pennant coming, and we got a little signs of the Lisco Preds, and then we've also got Death at Dawn with the Parks and Rec. What's going on with this? Well, Death at Dawn, like I was telling you before, it's not Tennessee schedule in Alabama <laughs> at, in football at 7 a.m. in the morning. I mean, that, that would be maybe truly death at dawn. Uh. But this is a program. It's a workout program beginning. It's going to be May 11th through the 22nd during the weekday, 6 to 7 a.m., and it will be at Memorial Park Community Center. It's $10 if you register before May 1 and $15 after May 1, and it's limited to the first 50 participants. And it will be just a two-week exercise program to jumpstart and challenge someone's workout. A lot of people, it's best to work out. A lot of people do well working out in the mornings. You get your day going really well. You're going to do some running, a little bit of jogging and walking. Some of the things will be done outside at Memorial Park. Some of them will be done inside on the treadmills that we have in the exercise uh, facility. And also just some weight strength training uh, exercises on outdoor equipment. So almost kind of like a boot camp type thing. Neat stuff is happening on May the 11th through the 22nd. Registration begins now. And who do we call? Who do we get signed up for? This is for? At at Memorial Park, you call 434-6237. All right. And let's see, game audio is on thegamenashville.com. Is what you said, Horace? Yep. There you go. I can listen to it. Yeah. Yeah, they're – they have changed the radio announcers around down there. I know they're they and they actually changed affiliates this year, and 
there's a new sports station. I guess it's been in operation a year or so. George Plaster, who was one of the longtime Nashville sports talk show guys, went to this station, and it's uh, 102.5. All right, it's called The Games. We'll check it out tonight, The Game, Nashville. Dot com. So this all starts, as we said, on May the 11th with the John City Parks and Rec. Again, that phone number is 434-6237. All right, very good. Anything else you want to leave us with today? We are just saying we got softball. We had, had until the rain hit, we had 62 teams playing between here and wa- the Washington County fields this past weekend. We're getting ready our adult softball program. We start playing games on Monday night, so if you're – you know, looking for some to watch some softball, to get out in the evenings, come out to the park, maybe do a little exercise, walk around the park, walk on our track here at the facility, and then watch a little softball in the evenings. When's the next big tournament coming to John City? Big softball tournament. The next biggest one we have now. We have a little, like a little, a smaller adult tournament this weekend playing here, and then there's some baseball tournaments in early May. But will be the Johnson City will be the Horton Sports Invitational, and that will be in May. Like it will be Memorial Day weekend, and when we get closer to that time, we'll go over that. That is a, a benefit for the Johnson City Parks Foundation. Neat stuff. So a big, lot of teams coming to town, right? Yes, probably any in the neighborhood of probably fifty to seventy teams that weekend. Ooh, putting. Heads in beds and, and, again, driving the economy. That's a good thing, bringing all these people exactly. to town. Carmichael, you're the best. I appreciate you very much, my friend. Stay uh, stay cool, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. We'll do it all over again, right? Thanks, Tom. Yes, we will. Yep, good man right there. Our buddy David Carmichael, I can get with him, get my Predators pennant and my Predators sign, too. What is it? Go Preds? What is it? Uh, something like that. Yeah, go Preds. So, may not need it after tonight, but we'll still put it up here nonetheless. And for those that want to listen to the game yeah, and they want to do it on their computer or stream it, it's thegamenashville.com. Dot com. Yeah, thegamenashville.com. I'll be there. I'm going to listen to it tonight right here. I'm going to pop me some popcorn, prop my feet up. use your Wi-Fi radio, Tom? I could. What could I find on there, too? Well, uh, don't ask me. You say you can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't type in the game Nashville.com on my I don't know. Wi-Fi You're radio. You're going to have to get out the instructions. Uh, okay, read here we them. go. Yeah, okay, he's give me some taters. He's getting <laughs> all right. So he's over here. I went four for five by the way today, and I'm not happy. It's still, so. a loss is a loss. Oh man, that just stings me. <laughs> oh, I can't. win, lose, or time, or or no. Al Davis says just win, baby, and I'm stinging. I got. I'd rather go over five and go four for five. I See, just, now I know why you have such an uh, – uh, you, you're attached to the Raiders because you're both losing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Lordy, that just makes me mad in a wet end. I'd rather be over for five and go four for five and not win. All right, Brad Kozlowski, we had caught up with him earlier in the week. And, you know, we've been talking about Bristol Motor Speedway just finishing up with the race. They're now moved on to Richmond. So I asked Mr. Kozlowski, I said, tell me about Bristol Motor Speedway great track for me personally i love the challenge that is bristol this is a uh, in-your-face racetrack with this track the way it is right now you drive every lap as hard as you can and it's it's such a challenge because this track was really changed uh dramatically about three years ago uh <laughs> when it got ground on the top lane uh and, and what happened that kind of changed the track there is uh you know it's smoothened out concrete surface in that one particular spot and it, it lost a little bit of banking which uh the really smart guys with degrees would tell you that you know should make that part of the track slower uh but the exact opposite happened uh, when the track got that smooth patch on the very top lane of the racetrack to where it creates this very high grip spot uh and it's a very narrow high grip spot the cars all move up there because there's so much more grip uh, but kind of the caveat that goes with that that makes it such a challenge is, uh, you know, that grip spot uh, is maybe two foot wide at best. So that challenge uh, means that you have to drive the car very hard. Uh, so that's what 500 laps of Bristol is going to demand from you. Uh, it's going to demand perfection. Uh, it's going to demand uh, that you drive your car uh, as hard as you can up against the wall and to its limit. Uh, all 500 laps, or all the green flag laps at least. Uh, and it's it's quite a challenge. So uh, one that I embrace and, and I really enjoy about this track and you know, part of why I look forward to coming here. Brad Kozlowski, again, very positive spin about the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. And so that uh, got his comments about that earlier in the week. Federal judge has approved a plan that brings the NFL and more than 5,000 former players one step closer to a settlement in a concussion lawsuit. 
could end up costing the National Football League more than a billion dollars over 65 years. Senior U.S. District Judge Anita Brody has twice sent the deal back to lawyers because there were concerns that the original $765 million settlement proposal might run out. So now it's going to be some, uh, what, over a billion dollars possibly over 65 years. Negotiations did not increase the $765 million plan, but the NFL agreed to uncap payments in the revised plan. Also, the plan removes the limit on how much can be spent on medical monitoring. So uh, this is uh, going to be a big deal. Retirees and their families will be eligible for prompt and substantial benefits, will avoid years of costly litigation. And so uh, the NFL may be having to pony up a billion dollars over 65 years. That's a chunk of change. So, 65 years, I guess that's why they spread it out so far. Big yeah. is a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, the new settlement would pay players on the average $190,000. Payouts could reach a million to $5 million for players diagnosed with Parkinson's disease or Lou Gehrig's disease in the 30s or 40s or for deaths involving chronic brain trauma. So uh, critics also say that even a billion dollars in payouts is not enough for the National Football League, which is annual revenues of more than $10 billion dollars that's per year 15 million plus per year for 65 years yeah Th- 15 million three hundred eighty four thousand six hundred fifteen dollars a wow. year wow wow so huh that's a chunk of change critics also contend that even a billion dollars pounds not enough again they're making 10 billion dollars a year in revenue so what do you think you think it's not enough or or see well my, it, I, I realize that uh, uh, you've got some players out there that have suffered some injuries and, and whatnot. And, yes, I guess um, uh, in years past, you know, there just wasn't enough information out there to tell the players and the teams and, you know, what the risks were. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this bit about concussions isn't new. I mean, it's been around for, for many, 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 many years. Mm-hmm. And kids and players and teams, they still go out there and they compete. They know what the risks are when they hit the field. If they don't want to get hurt, they don't want to, you know, take that chance. Don't play. Bottom line, and you're getting paid millions and millions of dollars. Some of these players are to play, you know, football. You know, so yeah, the way I look at it is, uh, if you're going to take the money and take the risk, why should the NFL have to come in behind and and reimburse you again? I, I just don't see that. So they know when they put on that helmet. That oh yeah. They can get a concussion. Oh, yeah. So I don't, I'm not a doctor, so it says the payouts could reach a million to $5 million for players diagnosed with Parkinson's disease or Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, I, again, I don't, I'm not a doctor. Does a concussion cause those diseases? I, I, and I don't know that answer. Well, so, I, I, you know, and I'm not making light of it. So don't. My, my father has Parkinson's, and he didn't play football. Yeah, so I, I didn't and know. Nobody knows what causes it. Yeah, concussions, I, I don't know. So anyway, that's part of it says the payouts could reach a million to $5 million for players diagnosed with Parkinson's disease or Luke Gehrig's disease in their 30s or 40s or for fatalities or deaths involving chronic brain trauma. Now that, I would think, would come from concussion. Uh, there again, I don't know. I'm going to learn something new here. I, didn't know where, I did not know Parkinson's disease or Luke Gehrig's disease could come as a result of a concussion. So, it may be the risk of catching, yeah. you, know, you know, contracting that is, 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 is higher because of a concussion. I don't know, but... Like I said, you know, these players today, uh, over the last 15, 20 years, you can't tell me they did not know the risks when they went onto the field and put them strapped on the helmet and went out there and played ball. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> you, you go 20 years, you know, plus back, and there's not been studies, and they just didn't know, you know. That's exactly what this is saying. The NFL may never have to disclose what it knew about the risks and treatment of concussions. But, you know, so. in, in recent years, though, these players, you know, it's been in the media. It's been in the news for for years now. So why should these, you know, the, the NFL have to come in behind and pay out some more? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, it's kind of like NASCAR. You get in the seat, and you know, I've talked to enough drivers over here. They realize that a, there's a fifty fifty shot they're going to get tore up in a wreck. Now, yeah. the safety measures NASCAR has taken to this point is pretty good, all things considered, given the fact you got, you know, forty three cars case in point up the other night going, you know, 115, 120 miles an hour around the uh, last great Coliseum at BMS. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, the safety's pretty good, I think, uh, given the speed these guys go and Danica. So, but they'll also tell you they understand there's a risk. When you right. get in that car, you know that there's a 50-50 shot. You can get in a wreck or get tore up. So 
Uh, same with the football field. I guess what you're saying is when they put that helmet on they, and the pads, they walk out on the field, they know there's a shot. Oh, and that could be – that's like a pickup game out here on the sandlot. There's a 50-50 shot you can get hurt. The, so you know NFL, that going in. Football is a violent sport. Yeah. It's a violent contact sport. And every time you, you, you go up, you know, from peewee, you know, to, you know, middle school, mm-hmm. to high school, to college, to NFL, it becomes more violent because the hits get stronger because the players are bigger and faster. And, you know, these guys know what they're getting into. So, you know, I don't have any sympathy for them uh, in, in one respect because they know the risk and they're taking the money to go out there and, and, and please the fans. I understand that. It's entertainment too. But uh, they take the money. They take the risk. Well, yeah. just like the middle school situation in Washington County, to get ready to change all that because yeah. of the concussions. Yeah, now, now schools, different scenario. Yeah. Because you know, you've got government involved. <laughs> and the kids and are government playing. government-sponsored sports. And they're there playing because they love the game. Right. And the pros, they're getting a paycheck and a you good one. It. Most of them are getting a really nice paycheck. So right. uh, I would tend to skew towards you. I would, you know, why does the NFL have to go back behind these folks and pay them? Of course, it's easy for me to say. I don't have a loved one that's gone through any of this. But uh, yeah, yeah, I have all the sympathy for them in the world. I mean, I understand there's some issues. And, and some of these players didn't know the risk back, mm-hmm. you know. But we're talking players that were playing 20, 30 years ago. So. And now, you know, uh, back that, that recent, they did know. Right. And plus, now the National Football League, and let's face it, these guys are bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. I mean, can you imagine somebody just waylaying you? It's, you know, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, about 280, 290 pounds, and, yep. you know, not a bit of body fat on them, running like a runaway bull to take your head off. Well, sure. It's like getting hit by a you know, steam locomotive. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. So, uh, anyway, that's the latest of the National Football League. Of course, Roger Goodell's obviously not happy, but federal judge has approved a plan that brings the National Football League and more than 5,000 former players one step closer to a settlement in a concussion lawsuit that could end up costing the National Football League more than a billion dollars over 65 years. What did you say, average out about 15 mil a year? $15.3 million a year. Yeah. I would say, of course, it says in the at the end of the article here that no money is going to be dispensed or dispersed until – all the appeals process have been finished. So oh, you're looking at years down the they're road. They're going to tie this up in court. The NFL, I don't think, is going to arbitrarily yeah. write checks to people until they have to because that's a lot of money. And I tell you what, if, if the NFL is smart and these teams are smart, when they sign these players now, there ought to be some sort of clause you know, that, that says you know the risks and uh, <laughs> the liability is on them and not exactly. on the NFL and on the, these individual teams. Before we go to the break, we have a breaking story out of Tallahassee this afternoon. Florida State looking into violations as Publix <laughs> grocery store chain disputes the Winston Crab Legs claim. So now we got <laughs> your guys in here every day. Florida every State's in, day. It's in the news all the time. Every day this guy's making news in a story one way or the other. In this case, in a roundabout way. Florida State will cooperate with the NCAA to determine whether a violation occurred when Jameis Winston received free crab legs from Publix. After Winston's televised comments to Jim Harbaugh revealed details not previously known to Florida State. Uh, <laughs> what else is he not talking about? Yeah. Winston was asked to discuss stealing thirty-three dollars worth of crab legs from a public store in Tallahassee. Publix is, of course, a grocery store chain. P U B L I X Publix. Winston had apologized for forgetting to pay for the crab legs after the incident. In talking to Harbaugh on the show. He referred to the transaction as a, quote, hookup. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling It just gets better and better and better with this kid. I'm telling you. you know, yesterday, well, they gave it to me. Now he's forgotten to pay for it, and it was all set up. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. It's just, it's just, oh. Publix, meanwhile, has responded with a statement to deny that any free food was given to the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. Now, all you have to do in this whole – I've told you this yesterday. Look at the Go footage. back to the, the uh, security s- surveillance footage inside the store and see if somebody handed him the crab legs. Yeah. And if he walks out the door, that guy's guilty because he did it. He should be fired as the employee. And may Jameis, have been fired. Well, it may have been. And Jameis, whether he paid for him or he put him in his pants and left with him, he left without – a financial <laughs> transaction with crab legs at the grocery store. And they which, weren't in a box. They were in his pants. his pants. So, <laughs> so either way you slice it, there has been a problem. Or not a problem. Or crack been, it. Yeah. What's the word I want to use? 
Uh, not a discrepancy. What has happened? A felony wouldn't be a felony. No, it's just a misdemeanor theft. Misdemeanor theft. There's a theft. There you go. Yeah. Either way, he slices it. Whether he paid for it, he walked out with it. Either way, I mean, he didn't pay for it. Whether he stole it or somebody gave it to him, there's not many money transacted. That is a theft. He's, either way. Larceny. It's, it's real simple. <laughs> I mean, it's we're, we're making this a mountain out of a molehill, and it shouldn't be. Uh, Public says we don't know. You know, we're, we're denying any free food was given. Now our boy James. Yeah, because well, you know, you know, one of their employees <laughs> got him in the spotlight. They ain't gonna say nothing. Got him in the sling. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, it just continues, and I'm sure the folks at Florida State, they, it's like every day this hope has got and anything else because he just incriminates himself every day. He just he just makes my point every day. Yep. Why go there? <laughs> I don't care how talented he is. Why go there? You're inheriting a problem. Yeah. yeah. And as it will just as, get worse. As far as drafting him, you mean? Period, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gator, I got him going over here. But, I mean, the guy's in the news every day. Am I picking on Jameis Winston? No, not at all. He's making news. You know, I mean, if he's newsworthy. He's on my list for a reason. Yeah, well, he's on your list, but I'm not picking on him. But the guy's, you know, he is what he is, and he's doing what he's doing. Now, yesterday he came out and said in the same interview that, he and his buddy get one there and got a free birthday cake rolled out of there. No There's boys. another <laughs> thing. <laughs> and he's using the word, quote, uh, the transaction was a, quote, hookup. So somebody just handed him and said, hey, man, you, you Florida State quarterback, take it. Compliment. Hook me up. <laughs> so now Florida State says, Jimbo Fisher addressing Winston's claim on the ACC teleconference. Fisher said the school had previously believed it was an isolated incident. And the compliance office will look into Winston's comments. <laughs> uh, even if it was a hookup, okay, it's still a violation. Oh, oh it's a violation of rules. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's called – if you and I did that or anybody else, okay, we walk into Pick Food City. There's one of our sponsors, or will be. So we walk into Food City and snag up some crab legs and walk out the door and guys said, what? Well, a horse gave him to me. So just go, just enjoy, man. You're on the radio. <laughs> you're on the internet doing a show, man. You're 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 the deal. It's unethical. You're the deal. Just take his crab legs. Well, somebody's got to pay for him. Yeah. If I didn't pay for him, then I thiefed him or I stole him. If you gave him to me, then you need to be fired as an employee. All they have to do is go back and look at this surveillance video. It solves everything. Did someone give him to me or not? If they did, then he's in trouble. Jameis is in trouble because he walked out with him. If the guy didn't give them to him, he walked out and didn't pay for him. He's in trouble. I wonder why they're in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> that says so much. I'm right not there. going down that road. I at mean, all. Yeah, if he, <laughs> if they, it seems like to me, if he was hooked up and someone gave it to him, it would have been in a bag or a box or something. He would just walked out. Yeah. But no, he had to conceal them by sticking them in his pants. <laughs> pants pockets. Yeah. Crab legs. So to now, me, that that's knowingly, he walked out knowing he had something he didn't pay for, and you know, whether it was a hookup or not. So he's guilty. Now, this webcam that we use every day in here for the show, yeah. it's pretty sophisticated, but not nearly as sophisticated as the You'd surveillance. Be surprised. You'd be surprised. Some of these cameras are old. But I'm just saying the yeah. surveillance cameras in these grocery stores, when you when you, <laughs> <laughs> when you be able to tell that a guy's walking out of there with crab legs in his pants. If there's one on the front door, you should be able well, to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So how, how did he get by with that initially? Of course, you know, that that, that recording could be – gone you know they, that it was more than 90 magically days ago. erased well not necessarily magically erased some of these dvrs and these security systems they you know record over themselves every 30 days or so yeah <laughs> so i mean you're talking about something that happened a year or two ago yeah so it's good probably stuff. gone ah uh, yeah it's good stuff it just i'm telling <laughs> but you but it's still every he's... day it's something different this guy <laughs> i'm sure florida state's wishing you know just put a clamp on this guy or even the nfl or i mean we're we're a week away from the draft academy now, if you're one of these teams thinking about drafting this guy, you can continue to hear this. First off, he stole $33 worth of crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. You can't even look at me and say that with no, a straight face. I mean, this guy's getting ready to make multi, <laughs> multi, multi million dollars. And he stole $33 allegedly worth of crab legs. Now, if I'm a, I'll just tell you, if I'm the owner of one of the teams, I'm not going to touch him with the 10 foot. I don't care how good he no. is. Because no. when the, the old proverbial, you're in the foxhole, the shrapnel's flying, you're in the middle of the battle, the heat of the battle. This guy I don't think is going to be able to bring it home for me. So I just, I'm not going to 
spend a lot of money trying to hope this guy will be who I need to win a Super Bowl. Well, he's so. also in that mode of player where he's going to get hurt. He's yep. going to be another RG3. He's going to be Michael Vick. He, they, they were on the sidelines as much as they were on the field because they, they run the ball and they get slammed yep. and they get hurt. And the other guy that I told you I wouldn't draft and I wouldn't today, I don't care, is Johnny Manziel. I no. don't think he's going to. No. He is not going to make it in the National Football League. It's just that simple. CFL, maybe. I don't know what else is out there besides NFL, but I just don't think he's an NFL caliber player. Yeah. I don't think he's big enough. I don't know about his mental toughness, but he's a heck of a college athlete. I'm not going to dispute that, but I just don't think he's got, got what it takes to make it to the National Football League. I mean, you look on TV on Sunday, and to go watch him in person, it's a whole lot. I mean, you just you, – it's like watching the NBA. You can't realize how big these guys are unless you see them in person. Same with no. the football. I mean, these guys, six, seven, six, and they run like deer, and they'll take your head off. Yeah. And you got a little guy like Manziel, and he may make prove me wrong. I don't know. There are a lot of talented players that can throw an accurate football, yeah. but that doesn't make you a great quarterback. And the same with this guy. Now, talent-wise, he's probably one of the best that's come down the pike in a long time. I mean, yeah. he's just God-given talent. Yeah. But he obviously has some ithus. And so, oh, you know, yeah, so – <laughs> anyway, if I'm an owner or a team, I would think long, or as you said it earlier, I would think long and hard before I drafted this guy coming up next week because I just don't yep. think he, maybe between the chalks, between the stripes, he could take you. But, I mean, his own attorney said, he said this guy's not ready for the National Football League there off the field. There are too many red flags, just yep. too many red flags. Yep. So, anyway, that's that's the latest. Now we got Publix grocery store chain in the middle of this thing. Don't know what you're talking about. Yep, $33 <laughs> with the crab legs. <laughs> It was a hookup, he says. Quick break. We'll be right back. We'll dial in and check in with our buddy. We'll go from Jameis Winston and Brad Kozlowski and David Carmichael and all the other items we've had on today. We've still got a baseball, softball, high school update for you. We'll do that coming up. But first, our buddy David Crum from the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. He joins us next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. It's easy to buy insurance and forget about it. But the more you learn about your coverage, the more gaps you might find. Like how you thought you were covered for this. Check it out, Mom when you're really only covered for this. Or how you figured you're covered for this when you're actually paying for this. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your coverage. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. See what might be hiding in your coverage at farmers.com slash gaps. Life has its twists and turns. It can take many different shapes. But a good retirement plan changes with your life. And as we talk about what you're putting away and how much you'll need to retire, what was uncertain becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. And back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Thursday. Thank you for being with us, wherever you may be. And, again, we got, uh, what was it, Sunday? Monday? When did we get the – somebody was following us in Great Britain. What day was that? You oh, I, I didn't say what day. Oh. We just got a hit. I saw that the other day yeah. when I was looking. So. All right. So, got them in Great Britain, for, I guess, over there at least once, checking us out. And we appreciate that very much. We go to the phone. He's there, our buddy David Crum, again, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. And we said good afternoon, sir. How are you? 
Good afternoon, Tom. I'm just fine enjoying this beautiful East Tennessee weather we've got going. You got it. It's very, very nice out there. And let's talk about that. We're going to be talking about some hunting and fishing. Also, the bears are on the move again. But let's talk again, uh, as we said, let's talk about some spring weather concerns. What's going on with that? You know, springtime weather, especially here in East Tennessee, and it may be that way. I know you've got listeners outside of East Tennessee, but it may be that way in other areas. But springtime weather concerns, you know, it may be in the the mid-70s. 70 to the mid 70s in the afternoons but early mornings are still very cold and crisp so be sure you prepare dress appropriately for going outside and if you're going outside to enjoy what the good lord above has provided for us be careful when, if you go say camping you go out camping and you set up a campsite you know take a look around because some of the high winds that have come through here lately have knocked down a lot of tree limbs you don't want to have a an accident while you're out there camping, recreating, trying to have a good time, you know, so just be aware of different things, try and step outside the box, and as Mama used to say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so just dress appropriately, take extra food, if you end up uh, getting stuck up in the mountains, you may need extra food and extra water, try to avoid uh, beverages that dehydrate your body, such as caffeinated or alcohol beverages, just try and stay well hydrated, and take some extra water, with you and get out and enjoy the outdoors good lord above provided us many blessings outside and that's his number one church so go out and enjoy it but be prepared Don david crumb the tennessee wildlife resource agency officer joins us each week with great information we're going to be talking about the bears here coming up in just a second but let's talk about the turkey season and uh, turkey season hunting what's going on with that right now turkey season is going in full swing so far statewide hunters have harvested over 23,000 birds statewide in the state of Tennessee. That's actually down a couple thousand from last year. But still, I've talked to several turkey hunters that have had a really good, successful season. Had some reports that birds are already, the hens are already on the nest laying eggs. So if you go out there and you hear a gobble, there's, chances are there are fewer hens out there to distract him or take him away from your calls. Of course, granted, they may be call shy by this time, so it's a good later season challenge to get out there and try and harvest a bird please remember all of your safety ideas again while you're out there turkey hunting don't wear red water blue and don't stalk a turkey if a turkey's calling try to call the turkey into you because you don't want to be mistaken for game or have a hunting accident while you're out there and of course we've already talked about avoid the type of uh, the technique called fanning where you take a turkey tail fan and wave it around to try and draw in a, a big gobbler coming in because you may be mistaken for game. You don't know what, where the other hunters are out in the woods. Somebody, you may think you're the only person out hunting a piece of property and somebody may have slipped in trespassing. So just be careful while you're out there and enjoy yourselves. Tony David Crum again with the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. What must we have in our possession license-wise to be spring turkey hunting this season? depends if you've got the annual sportsman's license that covers everything that you need if not you'll need a regular hunting and fishing license statewide and also a big game gun license if you go up on the wildlife management area which we're lucky very fortunate to have thousands of acres of cherokee national forest which is wildlife management area also here you'll have to have a wildlife management area permit if you're hunting big game and so that's what you must have and so those available where can we get our license right now there are several different License agents around the area, uh, the sporting goods stores such as uh, Cabela's, excuse me, such as Bass Pro here locally in Bristol, uh, also the Walmart and Kmart and other sporting goods stores, Dick's, and talk to Academy Sports that's going in there in Johnson City. And once they're completed, there'll be a license agent also. So we've got several different license agents around the area. We're talking to David Kramer, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer, a great friend of this show, and just a great friend of getting out some great information each and every week. It's all free for you, of course, by listening here to the Tom Taylor Sports Show now on live stream. Then tonight, later on today, podcasting on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, phone app, and also on YouTube. And so all those where you can find us, and you do, and we appreciate that. Again, uh, we're up to nine states, and as we've told you, we've actually had hits from Great Britain, also from Brazil, so we certainly appreciate that. Before we let you go, the Bears are out of hibernation. They're on the move in the mountains of East Tennessee. Tell me about it. Oh, absolutely. The Bears are hungry. They're looking for food. We've had no reports of aggressive.
aggressive bears anywhere around the area. And I want to stress that, so I want to repeat it again. We've had no reports of any aggressive bears around the area. They are doing nothing but looking for food. They're moving around and knocking over trash cans, getting into dog food, cat food, uh, comp, they're getting into compost piles, different things that provide an easier meal for them instead of walking up and down ridges in the mountains. All they have to do is knock over a trash can. And what we throw out is like a large buffet to them so they can sit there and eat and not put forth as much, near as much effort. This time of year, they'll be fattening up. Of course, they're trying to, to bulk back up from a, a long winter siesta, and they took a little took a little nap, and now they're trying to put, off, put some weight back on. So they're moving around. If you have a bear come into the area, and this also goes for any nuisance animal, remove the food source seven to ten days, and generally the area, or excuse me, the animal will move on off somewhere else to go find food. So it's a very powerful diving force. When an animal gets hungry, it goes looking for food. If you think about it, very simple concept. People hunt every single day. When your stomach tells your brain that you're hungry and sends those signals to your brain, you go out and you hunt. You may not go to the woods. You may go to a fast food restaurant or to an actual restaurant or maybe even the grocery store or to your own kitchen. But every animal hunts every single day. So just keep that in mind. You remove that food source from them, and they'll move on somewhere else. We're talking to our buddy David Crumb from the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. So which on a bear is more prevalent, his sight or his smell? Which which is the better for the bear? Oh, his smell, absolutely. A bear can smell food a half a mile away. A bear has a very keen sense of smell. Uh, animals in the wild, uh, deer and bear, have very keen sense of smells. They can smell. Well, a canine officer, the best way I can describe this is is talking from a, a canine officer perspective, a friend of mine that told me one time, he said humans smell pizza in general, just a plain, they smell pizza. A dog or a bear or even well, a deer potentially could actually smell each individual ingredient in that pizza. So that's, that's a good way to put it, kind of put it in perspective to where we can understand that. Before I let you go, the 2015 National Football League schedule has come out, and your Pittsburgh Steelers are going to take a butt whooping on November the 8th when the Raiders roll into Heinz Field, baby. I'll go. If you'll go, we'll drive and go up and watch it. And they're coming to Pittsburgh November the 8th. Do you want to do this bet? Well, I still haven't got the last bet yet, but you want to do another food bet? I think we'll have to do another food bet. I think uh, when you're saying that the Raiders are going to take a butt whooping, even though Paul Malu is retiring, I think the I think the Steelers are going to Steelers going to pull a, another one there out in Hines. You know the Raiders beating somebody. Regretfully, the only <laughs> people they've been able to beat the last two years has been the Steelers throughout their whole season. Uh, so we'll just wait and see what happens. Yeah, well, uh, we we'll probably before we go further this forward to this other bit. I guess you at some point you got to feed me the last two I've won. So when can we make that happen before we go for, forward to this new bet? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom, but the phone's breaking up. I can't fully understand you there, uh, little buddy. Yeah, you know, I got you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you've been out in the sun a little too long, didn't didn't slather up that ever-growing forehead and keep it from getting a little sunburn on it today. I don't know. You seem to be a little out of it. Yeah, you need to go in politics. That's pretty good. That was a good curveball right there, my man. So before I let you go, tell me, as always, the, the magic hook, would you please? Remember, folks, get your kids hooked on hunting and fishing, and you don't have to worry as much about them getting hooked on other things. And safe boating saves lives. Crum, remember, November the 8th, baby, the Raiders are coming. They're going to be a butt whooping in Pittsburgh, and it won't be the silver and black. The Raiders are back. I'm telling you, they're ready. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, Tom. I, I don't know. You know, they're one of those left coast teams. Oh. You never know what's going to happen. Oh, all right. Crum, have a great week, my friend. Stay warm, and uh, we'll get an update from you again next Thursday, all right? All right, Tom, you take care. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. That's my man, David Crumb, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. And, again, appreciate him coming being with us. And the bears are on the move again here in the mountains of East Tennessee. And I know last year there was sightings uh, down in Johnson City in Kingsport in Bristol. So, uh, again, as he says every year, he didn't say it today, but every time we talk about this, we're taking more and more of, of their, uh, what is it I'm wanting to say, more and more of their, domain i guess uh, where they've born and raised and lived so as we build more subdivisions and we're carving into their places of of existence so they come down looking for food and so 
problems there. It's not going to go away. So the Bears are on the move again here in the mountains of East Tennessee. Story before we go to the break, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder firing their coach, Scott Brooks. We told you about that the other day. Three trips in four years to the Western Conference Finals, one trip to the NBA Finals. They missed the playoffs this season. They ran him off. And so now it looks like the guy they're going after, and apparently he is interested. Now, didn't we have a story earlier in the start of the show back in maybe early April, late March, that Billy Donovan said, no, I'm not interested in going to the NBA. Well, apparently that's all changed now. Uh, one he person, was looking to improve his status at Florida. He wanted that uh, bigger paycheck. Yeah, he got a pay raise. He did. For a losing record. Yeah. It's been eight years since Donovan agreed to deal to uh, agreed in a deal to coach the Orlando Magic, but then got cold feet and backed out of the deal. And the resulting settlement reportedly included a non-compete clause that prohibited him from taking another NBA job for five years. Well, that's of course the meters since went past the five-year mark. So one person who has been in contact with Donovan says, "quote He's ready to try the NBA." So yeah, he he got a pay raise down in Florida. Yeah, for losing. <laughs> yeah, and I think I read where he's the third highest pace highest paid coach yeah. either in the SEC or the country behind Calipari and uh, Patino, I think, and the uh, coach from Kansas too. So uh, let's see. One coaching industry source called Donovan the only logical choice left after UConn's coach Kevin Ollie said he's not interested. He's going to stay there with them. Uh, let's see. Donovan makes $4 million a year, would be seeking an arrangement similar to the five-year $25 million deal that Golden State gave Steve Kerr, and the Knicks gave Derek Fisher last summer. So, said he's tired of recruiting. Said if it ever made the jump to the NBA, it would have to be a winning situation. And so, guys making $4 million a year, wants an arrangement, agreed to a five-year, $25 million deal to coach the Oklahoma City Thunder for 82 games. <laughs> so, not too bad right nope. there. So, anyway, said he's tired of recruiting. Somebody close to him says, you know, he wants out, try something different. So, We'll see, but Billy Donovan may be leaving Florida and maybe going to Oklahoma City to coach the Thunder. We'll see, but that's the latest in the old wire. We'll come up with the – come take a break, I should say, and come back with the high school and softball uh, updates here locally and also get you up to date on the baseball scoreboard of the big leagues. All that coming up next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the eight areas of your vehicle that takes constant continuing education is the air conditioner on your vehicle. Well, you would think that AC would be a simple one, but it's getting to be uh, a lot bigger than just AC. It's it's the management of the system, not just AC, but heat and everything. It's a lot more computer controlled than it used to be. It used to be just a little button on the dash that you pushed. Now there's all kinds of electronics involved in that. Braking systems it used to be fairly simple. Now some of the newer vehicles, you have to have a computer to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. It's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import and Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. Do you want to honor your mom this Mother's Day? At Max Medicine Mart, they have everything you'll need to say thanks to that special lady. Create a special gift basket full of quality Burt's Bees products. Moisturizing cream, facial scrub, lip balm, beeswax hand cream, just to mention a few, or pamper mom with a foot massager to re-energize her tired and sore feet, or a pair of stylish Franklin brand sunglasses, or maybe a specialty tea for mom with over 40 shelves of teas to choose from. Lots of choices for mom for Mother's Day at Max Medicine Mart, Center Street, Kingsport, open seven days a week. This Mother's Day, make tracks to Max. All right, D, you got about seven minutes left of the show here again on this Thursday edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Let's run down the scoreboard. Or, yeah, I get to be the way to do it. I'll let you do the baseball scoreboard. Let me run down baseball and softball here. Baseball from yesterday, you had, well, wasn't much there to report you from yesterday. <laughs> do I have the wrong date? I do. have the wrong page. <laughs> Never mind. Let's try this one. Now, this is the Kingsport Times News. And yesterday, here we go. 
It was South Doyle defeating Cherokee 3-2. Hampton beat Johnson County 6-5. Virginia High beat John Battle 14-2 in five innings. And Y Central over Eastside 5-3 in high school best ball from yesterday. Also, a couple of other scores. Crockett beat Tennessee High 14-6. University High all over Cosby. Logan Metcalf, 10 strikeouts for University High. Big win there yesterday for the Junior Bucks of University High School in Johnson City. And Sullivan East beat Elizabethan 9-4. to four. Now, today, game scheduled. I would think uh, we wouldn't have any rain. I guess we can play these days. It'll be a little yeah. cool. Daniel Boone will be at Sullivan South. Crockett will be at Chucky Doak. Morristown West will be at Dobbins Minute. Volunteer plays at Unica tonight. Hampton at Happy Valley. Sullivan North at North Green. Sullivan Central takes on Sullivan East at East. Unicoi County, the Blue Devil baseball team at Pigeon Forge. Cloudland at Avery County. And Northview Academy at Unica in a doubleheader beginning at 5 o'clock. It's baseball. What is going on in the big league scoreboard right now? In the big leagues, at the bottom of the six, you've got New York and Detroit all tied up. Uh, over at uh, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and the Pittsburgh Pirates are tied up in the top of the seventh, 4-4. Four to four. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. Miami now leads Philadelphia 6 to nothing in the top of the sixth. And going down the roll here, let's see, Atlanta and New York are now tied. Oh, really? Tied up. And they're in the bottom of the fifth. Braves they're, they're, and they're playing in New York. And, of course, in the top of the sixth, uh, you got Cincinnati tied up with Milwaukee. One to one. Nope. Two to two. Two to two. All right. Yep. So the so Reds have tied it up. Yes, they have. They're trying for a sweep in Milwaukee to head back home for the Cubbies and Milwaukee back to back in a six game homestand starting tomorrow night in Cincinnati. Then they wrap up the month. They'll be in Atlanta to take on the Braves on the 30th, a week from today, and then next Friday and Saturday and Sunday will be a four game set. The Reds and the Braves in Atlanta. That's baseball. Now, softball from yesterday goes like this. Daniel Boone over volunteer in a barn burner, 2-0. That was a battle of two teams in the top top half of the Big 7 Conference softball race. Elizabeth and doubles up Unicoi County in the big upset, snapping a 41-game win streak by Unicoi County as Elizabeth beats them 4-2. A couple of freshmen made those games, made that game very, very interesting. And let's see, it was, give these young ladies proper credit, Kelly Cunningham and Macy Herman were the two young ladies that really helped seal the deal for Elizabeth and snapping Unicoi County's 41-game conference winning streak, 4-2 win. Same two teams will play Monday at Irwin. Elizabeth are now 16-9. Unicoi County falls to 31-3 on the season. And that happened yesterday. Crockett's ladies beat Tennessee High 5-0. Now, let's see. Also from softball yesterday, or I should say today, Today you have Daniel Boone and Dobbins Minute. That'll be a dandy at 4:15. A Daniel Boone and Dobbins Minute right in the middle of the pack of the Big Seven. Crockett plays at Science Hill. That'll be a good one. Crockett on top of the conference at Science Hill. That's a 4:30 start today. Tennessee High at Volunteer. Also Sullivan North at Elizabethan South at Unicoi County in softball. Hampton at Happy Valley. Sullivan East at Johnson County. South Green at University High and Chucky Doak at North Green. That's all going on today. I would think if you lose, your Unicoi County losing your 41-game winning streak goes by the way. So the team gets to go there next, which will be south today. <laughs> well, it's not going to be pretty. No, nah, they're not going to be happy. <laughs> they won't be happy in Unicoi County. The Lady Rebels may have their hands full going out there today to take on Unicoi County after losing and having that 41-game winning streak snapped in the conference. Yeah, I don't think that's going to – that may not be a good day. It's not going to be good. <laughs> for the Lady Rebels. <laughs> I would say Coach Lingerfeld's got them Lady Blue Devils spitting mad today. Dobbins Minute in soccer today. Dobbins Minute plays at Elizabethan, Tennessee High at Sullivan Central, Daniel Boone at West Green, and Tri-Cities Christian will be at Crockett today in softball play. Again, that's happening around the region for today. It has been a fast show. May we say thanks to my man, the Gator, at Cherokee Barbershop. Again, he is open from 8.30 until 5, Monday, or rather Tuesday through Friday. And then, of course, he is open on Saturday. And get your ears lowered again, heading in for Saturday as well, or today from 8.30 till 5, Tuesday through Friday, 8.30 to 1 on Saturday. Again, the haircuts are free. A cup of coffee costs you 11 bucks. Get to keep the cup. I ain't been there yet. Yeah, I can tell. Look a little shaggy. I'm, that's as long as I've ever seen your hair. You going to just let it grow out? <laughs> I don't know. What you going to let grow is mine. Let's grow long hair together. I may let it go over the weekend and then yeah. go. I, let's just wait and see. I don't know. Now, Mrs. B, would she let you grow long hair? Oh, no. Like down here? like You a, don't want to see me in long hair. Really? Oh, no. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I used to have, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I had thick, black, long hair. Yeah? 
I don't have thick hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And the black is turning to gray. So gotcha. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. All right. So no long hair for you. Nope. But that's pretty long over there. That's the longest I've seen you yeah. have for a while. Yeah. So little nubbins are coming up. So usually you got to that's almost slick down, don't you? I, yeah, I like to, I like to keep it very, 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 very short. short. There you go. So anyway, he'll do it. For, he can do it for you now. Does he slap? How does he do that? Does he slap uh, shaving cream on your head and zip it no, down? No, no, we just use, just use clippers. A, just clippers with no guard. Zip. Oh, really? Yeah. So there is no number one, number two. It's no, it's just bare clippers. Zip. Down to the nose. Yeah, I don't shave it, but I mean, <laughs> we go down as close as you can get it. Got it. Straight razor shave. He'll do that for you as well. Hot towels on your face and loosen up. And you said the hot towels brings the the well, yeah, you know, the hot towels. Up. The hot towels will soften up your. Your beard, your whiskers, okay, right. and you shave. Then you spray it with that cold water. Makes them. And it sticks them right back up again, and you shave again. There you go. All right. They also, he'll put that little gizmo across your back, back massage and shoulder rub. So he's doing a lot of uh, hair cutting, and the place is growing, he's telling me. And that's a great thing. They're on South Rhone Street there right down from Tipton Haynes Working Farm. If the barber pulls out, that means the Gator Man is in. He is in 2 to through Friday from 8.30 to 5, and Saturday from 8.30 until one. So is that him over there sending you a text? That be him? Yeah, I've been talking to customers about Red's manager. Let me see here. <laughs> and the younger guys don't see the big deal. I'm worried about the next generation. Yeah. I am too, big guy. Yeah. I mean, when the players don't care if their manager goes off on an F bomb mm -hmm. tirade, mm -hmm. you know, what what does that say about the team in, whole, as a, in general as a whole? So. It says about our society in general. Oh, that too. Yeah. That goes a little bit farther than the baseball team, but. Anyway, that's what we got going on. We are out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. We are rolling into a goodbye mode here. The show brought to you by Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance, Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance at 323-8726, Wells Fargo Financial Network, or what was the name? Center Street Wealth Management Group is the name of that group with Wells Fargo and our buddy Greg Taylor. Base Mountain Park, Max Medicine Mart, Cherokee Barbershop, home of the Gator Man, Bristol Motor Speedway and Dragway. They start with us next week. American Import and Auto Repair, Kingsport Cabinetry, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, Book Lovers Warehouse, he joins us tomorrow, and Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. For my man, we say hit that right there. Hit the button there, cowboy. Roll on out of here. We thank you for being with us. And, again, we were joined today by Brad Kozlowski, Kevin Harvick, Greg Taylor, David Carmichael, Bob Figgins, and David Crump. And thanks to Horace hanging out with us, being producer and director. I'm Tom Taylor, your host, Win or Lose, Be a Good Sport. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. So long, everybody. <laughs>